that's why some of the items are informational and we haven't we you know some if uh, the future board wants to take a position on these some of these items they uh, they can but right now we just felt as though let's just get familiar with what is going on um, that said uh, oh and also I wanted to make the comment that we as you can see we've kind of reorganized things in that we had felt that in the past I don't know if this is going to hold true for a while but that we have made um, well, let's say in project review we've made applicants wait while we did our our general parliamentary procedures and approval of things and government reports and it just seemed as though we should prior potentially prioritize I mean we're not going to do it tonight but letting those people that are coming for projects to come in and leave in a reasonable period of time without <laughs> listening to some of our dirty laundry. Um, okay, that said, uh, do we have any motion to approve the agenda? Or is that even proper? Okay, looks like Margaret said yes. And I'll second. All right, there we go. Uh, uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, any any discussion? Go ahead. Somebody had, was it Mandy you wanted to say something? Or? My, I think it, maybe it's easier, Brad, to ask who's opposed rather than trying to look through all these little oh, screens. They did that you. yesterday at Midway, uh, right. which I just picked up on, duh, and um, it's easier to count the no or the abstention right. Is votes. somebody saying no? David? I'm not saying no. I'm just asking a question. Sure. Um, it doesn't look like the entire board is here. Who isn't here? Uh, John. I don't yeah. see John. Is Mark here? Mark's yep. here. Mark's Mark over there. there. Mark's here. Okay. So is it's just, just Don. Is, is Don the only one we're missing? Yes. Okay. I believe so. Okay. Yes. All right. So uh, all, in, all in favor of the agenda? Or, I'm sorry, all not saying no. What, what do you want us no, to do? Yes, it's affirmative. Yes, are you in favor? Okay, yes. one, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six. All right, uh, all opposed? All right, unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, and then also, we're to approve the minutes uh, from February. And June, um, I did have one question. Um, I'm not obviously as chair. I'm not going to be able to vote on this, but I had a question regarding the February minutes, and I just wanted to be clear uh, about other people's memory of what transpired. But uh, and I'm I'm not trying to be contentious here. I just wanted I, I just uh, remembered it differently. <laughs> Um, I thought that the only thing that I thought was that we had discussed Robert and uh, and uh, Scott resigning. Scott had said that he would be election chair, um, and uh, his impression I thought was that that he would stay on for the forty eight hours after the election. No. I thought, well. Uh, that's why I'm bringing this up because I just had a differing perspective on it, and, and I realized that uh, that others may have a different idea. But so I just wanted to just bring that up. Uh, that was my only my only question about the February minutes is that my understanding was that Scott was willing to wait that after it was pointed out that after the election there would be a 48 hour period in case there was a complaint. And he was willing to stay in a long on until that period was over, and then he would resign. So I don't know that uh, does anybody agree or disagree with um, my I disagree. I disagree with your recollection, and I would also like to reference his resignation letter, where he also states that date at midnight as well. And I believe we had a concerted effort about the. Uh, 
the actual co contesting of the election and who would handle those complaints. And at that point, it was decided that the elect the entire election committee, minus Scott, would be responsible to handle any uh, contention or any issues regarding the election. Uh, in those 48 hours. So the meeting stand as far as my understanding of what happened. That's how I feel. So I, it's hard to remember because it was February, but I, I sort of remember it consistent with Mandy that that Scott Scott said that he was willing to do it, but because he tendered his resignation effective at midnight, you know, I think he was technically disqualified. I had uh, anybody else? Yeah, I, I, I remember that uh, the same way that uh, uh, that Fred and uh, and Mandy do. I, I thought he was uh, going to be once midnight hit that he was separated from the board and wouldn't have any further functions. Uh, right. After that day. Eva. Yeah, that's my recollection as well. Mm -hmm. uh, of the reason, one of the reasons that I brought it up is that I thought that because during the period of time that we were dark. Um, see, I, I'm trying to remember that because yes, it's been a long time. I, I know that Robert had effectively given it as of a date. I was under the impression that Scott was more event driven. And when I talked to him prior to last meeting in June, uh, it's the only time that I spoke with Scott was sometime in June before the last meeting. He still thought he was election chair. So, uh, oh. because the event had not taken place. And oh. that's why I, told, I explained to him, Andy, that we were going to be getting together. That's why we were trying to do what we did last month so we can get board officers that we would tonight because the first vice chair's position is to be the election chair. Yeah. And at that point, he was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm good with that. I said, we're just trying to replace you. So I just had a different election, so um, and I can't vote anyway. So I just wanted to be clear on that, and uh, okay. uh, I guess uh, all in favor of approval. Oh, uh, anybody comment about the June minutes? They all good with that. All right. So uh, uh, all in favor of approval of both the February and June minutes. You want hands? Hands, please. Yes. I have to abstain. I was absent in February. If oh, you want to split right. them, I can vote on June. I, I, I June right. is correct, but right. it, it doesn't oh. matter. It, it, they're uh, yeah, it is what it is. Okay, so it's uh, eleven to zero. Uh, so and one abstention. It. Record the abstention. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. then, yeah, eleven zero and one. Um. All right. Yeah, actually, I wasn't there February either, so I don't know if you want me to abstain too, I guess. Oh, I see. Well, I'll I mean, I can do them one at a time if you would prefer. I mean, that probably would be more accurate. Whatever you guys want. I'd Is better to do it that way. All right. All right. Approval of the February minutes. Hands. <laughs> okay, nine. And abstentions, two, and I guess nays, there's zero. All right, approval of the June minutes. Hands. All right, 11, zero. Uh, nays, I, there aren't any. Um, okay. Moving on to the election of our interim board officers. And Shush. <laughs> that Make sure your dog has some inputs on it. Yeah, vicious one. Uh, well, I would any, like. Dog, what else? Anybody Next. like to? I'm sorry. Make a motion on the chair. I apologize. Sorry. I'd like to no, nominate okay. Fred. Who said that? I would like. Oh, David did. David nominated Fred. Uh, do you have. Fred, are you willing to be chair? 
Fred. Andy, can you put your thing on mute, please? Okay, there. Um, well, I, I, this is my view on it, Brad. Is I think you've done a very good job, Brad. And um, I'd be happy if you wanted to continue. But it's my understanding is that that you that you would rather not continue as chair. And and I think it's important that we get somebody that can work with everybody on the board. And so I if if I was chair. Um, you know, it's obvious up to the board, but I, I'm willing to do it and, and, and make a pledge to work with everybody in good faith on the board. Um, I think that you would probably be uh, received, uh, I, I don't know, I, I would prefer not to be the chair. Um, <laughs> I have been for a little while. Um, uh, Let me just say it, you've done an excellent job, Brad. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, and uh, we, we can't thank you enough. Thank yeah. you. Thank you all and for I saying that. I appreciate that. it. Yeah. I guess yeah. I was just uh, I was just surprised on how much the chair has to do. And then also, uh, I think, Fred, that you would be, um, I think, accepted uh, more by the, the board uh, as a new, neutral arbitrator, I think. Uh, that's just my perception that um, are there before we get into discussion is there any other nominations mandy uh, and I'd, like I'd like to nominate uh, mandy havlick for chair yeah and i would like to accept that nomination if you would have me i do feel like i can better serve the community and bring a diverse viewpoint to our, our peninsula community um so i would like to have the opportunity to serve as chair of the board as well if Fred is not able to, um, but if not, I would be interested in being a co-chair and get the experience as well in that capacity as well to serve our community. So should we? Do we have two anybody candidates? Else? Anybody, anybody else? Um, so should we? Do we have two candidates? Looks as though we have two candidates. Um, I guess we'll uh, call the Cast question. The All in favor of Fred as chair? Uh, hold on. Hold raise on. your hands. Can we, can we have a discussion about this first before oh, we okay. begin? Okay. That would yeah. be fine. Because um, yeah, Mandy, Mandy had brought up a concept of a, of a co-chair, which we've never had before. So I'm wondering, is that a possibility for our group or does our, our bylaws only regulate that we could have a chair and a vice chair? Um, well, I mean, the vice chair effectively could be a co-chair, right? Well, they there's, are the, there's no provision in the bylaws for a co-chair. Right. There is no provision. So no. It, it's, something, it's something that we can't have. Is that what you're saying, David? There's no provision the for it. And so for it. You know, um, let me clarify. I, I'm I'm saying I would like to go for like second chair, not co-chair. So that's what I'm saying. If I don't receive the, the main uh, chair chairship here for the board, I would be um, happy to serve as second chair. So. Okay. All right. And, and tonight we're gonna vote for chair, vice chair, second vice chair, secretary and treasury, right? Those are the, right. the whole board. Well, and also to some degree, at least we have to have project review has got to get oh, yeah, started yeah. again, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah committees will come after that. Yeah, yeah, at least that are. one. Okay. Um, I don't know about what other subcommittees would be appropriate, but All that right. one certainly seems to be the right uh, one that would, we should be talking about too. But that will be up for the next chair to decide. Yeah, and, and this chair is going to serve as an interim chair, meaning if he's going to be or she's going to be there till we actually have an election period or we go through the current cycle up until April, and then we revote because we never put a sunset. I think your point's well the, taken. The length of Mark. the uh, um, the appointment, right? Right. Oh, I actually, yeah, did, did, didn't we have an agreement when we had our June meeting that the interim board members would remain until there was an election? Yeah. And at that point in time, and at that point in time, uh, with the new board in place, whether that's before next March or, yeah, or next or March, yeah. then there would be a, an election for new officers that would be permanent. Agreed. All we're doing right now is we're electing interim officers That's to right. serve until there can be an election, a new board 
uh, comprised and then new officers uh, elected. Okay. And, and the last thing I have is in the past, and I didn't know how we could pull this off, but we, we've done it before in the past where it was an open vote where we raised our hands, or we had a silent vote where we passed around um, something and put names in it, which would be impossible at this point. So I think we should just go with the simple fact of raising our hands. Um, if, you got, if you guys are uncomfortable with, um, if you're uncomfortable with public voting and, and, and that's not how we normally do it for officers, you could send a chat to me or Brad and we could vote that way and it would be semi-private. No, I, I actually think our bylaws require that the voting be public. That's right. Okay. Okay. David is correct. Just to, to clarify that issue, I think that Mark is that, I think there's a secret ballot when you do a vacancy or I don't I have to look at the bylaws, but I think right. it's the vacancy and that's when, we, when we've when we done a secret ballot. Correct. Very good. Discussion over. Anybody else have anything to say? All right. Uh, all those in favor of Fred Cosmo as chair, raise your hand. All right, what is that, eight? I'm sorry, who is Elizabeth voting? Um, she's a, a community member and, she, and she, Elizabeth, I'm sorry, you don't have voting privileges. This is board action. Okay. Thank you, that. sorry, I was clear. I just wanna make that, sure we get accurate count. Throw that off a little yeah. bit. Okay, hands up again. Sorry, everyone, you're right, screen to screen. So one, two, three. Eva, is your hand up? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight for Fred. All those opposed? No opposed. It's oh, okay. Man. Well, then just for Mandy. <laughs> just me. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> okay. Thank you, David. Appreciate the, the point. Um, all those uh, in favor of Mandy as chair? One, two, three. All right. Uh, it would appear Fred Cosmo is the new chair, interim chair of the Valencia Community Planning Board. <coughs> Thank you very much, Fred. I turn the reins Thank over you, to this over organization to you, sir. Well, well, Fred, I make a motion for me to become second chair of the board. Yeah. Well, again, I, I I thank I thank everybody for showing confidence in me, and um, I, I do think we actually do have a really good board, and and if we work together, I, I think we can do good things to uh, protect the community. But um, so yeah, I think that the uh, nominations for the uh, first vice chair, and I, I have Mandy. Does anybody else want to nominate somebody? I've got. David and Brad. David. Uh, go ahead, David. Go ahead, Brad. I just wanted to make a comment that first vice chair's responsibility is also that of election chair per our bylaws. So mm -hmm. just to let you know that that's, uh, that's also uh, something that. Uh, I, I, read, I read the bylaws and I'm aware of that role. So I'm aware of that role. Thank you, Brad. Uh, uh, I just wanted to. And the other, the other thing, Mandy, is I serve the first cold. vice chair. You, you get, if I'm out, uh, not that we travel anymore, but in the old days, I did have to go to depositions out of town. But if I'm, if I'm gone, then you get to run the meeting. I'm up for the challenge, Fred, and I look forward, hopefully I get it. I look forward to working with you. Right, right, right. And you're part of sort of the executive board. Yes, I'm aware. I'd like to nominate myself. All right, okay, David. David. Okay, Mandy and David. Do we have any other nominations for first vice chair? Okay, I do not see any. Do we want to have any board discussion? Okay, seeing none, Corla, can you uh, have a vote? Um, what? You can call for it? I can call for it. Okay, so yeah, it. Count, uh, all those in favor of Mandy for first vice chair. One, two, three, four. I can't, I count four. All right, 
right. And all those in favor of David as first vice chair. One, two, three, four, five, six. I count six. <coughs> so it appears that David has been elected as the first vice chair. Well, I make a motion for the third chair. <laughs> <laughs> if you'll have me, huh? All right, um, we are going to move to the second vice chair, and I'm going to yes. start by uh, having Mandy nominated. Do we have any other nominations for the second vice chair? Well, Brad's done such a great job. I don't know if he's in for anything or not, but I was thinking maybe Brad might have wanted to do that if he's willing. You're on mute, Brad. Sorry, it's used to the mute being off permanently. Um, I would do second vice chair only because I know how much, I think that this group needs to spread out the workload and I would be willing to, and also since uh, there are four months worth of things that I have in my inbox and have talked to Mark about and people that I need to contact. I mean, I, I think that uh, I would do be willing to get that stuff sorted out by incapacity as, as second vice chair. Right. So I, yes, I would I'd be willing do that to do and Brad that. accepting the nomination. Thank so you. I have Mandy and Brad nominated for the second vice chair position. Are there any other nominations? Okay, seeing any, is there any discussion that anybody wants to have? All right, um, we will start. Uh, how many votes do we have for Mandy as second vice chair? I count three. Margaret needs to vote, so. Oh, yeah, okay, four. Who else is? Okay, how many votes do we have for Brad? You know where Eva stands. I can't. Sorry, one, two, I guess I got six. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So Brad, you have been elected as a second vice chair. And then I think we have, we also have the treasurer position and the secretary. So why don't we do treasurer first? I nominate Corla. I'll continue with, I'll, I'll continue unless somebody really wants it. And just to clarify, Cor Corley, you're currently the treasurer, right? Yes. Okay. Are there any other nominations besides Corla for treasurer? All right. All those in favor of Corla continuing as a treasurer, please raise your hand. It appears to be unanimous. Oh. Ten. Ten for Corla. All right, and then secretary. And I believe that uh, Sarah is currently the secretary. So do we have any nominations Sarah. for secretary? I nominate Sarah. Can't be the fuck. I have a question about David Dick. Again, is this all interim up until the next election? Everything is, even though he's a candidate, he can still be on the um, I'm not a executive candidate. or on the interim? Andy, I'm not a candidate. Oh yeah, you know what, I apologize, I apologize. Never mind. you're correct. Okay. Um, Sarah, will you accept the nomination? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Enthusiasm. I like to see that. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any other nominations for secretary? Okay. All those in favor of Sarah as a secretary? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sarah, you're going to vote for yourself? Nine, ten. I think we have ten for Sarah. I didn't know if I could. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Of course, you can always vote for yourself. So, I, I guess that I was wondering. Do um, I think that we should, um, you know, subject if, if everybody else is in favor, but we should 
nominate um, people to be chairs of various committees so that we can start, you know, I mean, it seems like we haven't done anything since February. And, you know, there's a lot of work in the community that we need to represent people. So, um, and certainly people have identified things like project review, but, you know, all, all the committees are important. And so, um, I, I, that's my recommendation is that we go forward and we nominate people to be the chairs of the various committees is, um, I just throw that out, make sure, Mandy, do you have a comment? Sure, I'd like to make a motion to become the chair of the traffic and transportation chair if Brad is no longer interested in serving in that capacity. Well, I'm, I'm gonna go through all the committees, but- Oh, and sorry. I, so, um, but we can, hmm? um, let me see, uh, committees. All right, so, I was actually gonna start with project review because I think that that's probably the one that we need to, to fill mm -hmm. first. So if, if, unless people, but we'll go through each one of them and traffic will be one of them. So do we have any anybody that, do we need to nominate somebody or does somebody wanna to volunteer to be the, the chair of project review? Mark? Dude, thanks. Okay, I, I will volunteer for one more time here as project review chair. Um, and I appreciate everybody's um, participation. Okay, do we have anybody else that's interested in being the chair of the project review committee? Who's more qualified? Jeez. Yeah, well, um, okay, so all those in favor of Mark uh, as the chair of the project uh, review committee? Yay! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 11, unanimous. Yeah. And I think let, let's do all the elections, but then I, I, I'd just like to run through it. I don't know if, if you want it or, or sometimes we've uh, at the board meeting, we've, we've asked people who want to volunteer to be on the committee. So I don't know if, if you want to just do that right now. If I, there's I think we should. With Mark on project review, if you want to raise your hand so that Mark, Mark knows who's on his committee. I'll be back on there. Okay, Mark, I see I see Lucky, Robert, and Brian. And the community can be involved in this at when, if Mark chooses, if, if a community member wants to be on, they need to submit a resume to him and then he approves the resume, the, or he brings that back to the board, the board approves. Anybody can attend, but to be an actual member, that's the process for community. Mark, are you gonna so, continue to have your meetings on in the afternoons on weekdays? Um, I had thought that I'd probably move it back later in the afternoon now, since we're all doing this, uh, you know, this Zoom meeting type stuff. But I was still thinking of starting at like 3.30, if that would be okay for everybody. I didn't want to push it into the evening, though. But we could. Um, I just know it gets hot in the afternoon, late in the afternoon. So, I mean, you know, I was thinking 3.30, you know, to start. Okay. I'll, I'll send an email out and ask everybody if that's okay with everybody, just to get a feel for it. So, Corla, were you? So, so who was on that? Brad, you were on too, and who else? I'd, I'd raise my hand, Lucky, and I think Robert. Robert. Lucky, Brad, Brad, and Robert. I'm sorry, what, where are we on? We're on uh, Project, project review. review. Oh, Project but, Review, okay, sorry. And, and if there are any board members that are interested in participating. Thank you. Okay, um, next I was gonna go to uh, long range. Oh, and, and I, I actually, I wanted to follow up on, on Corliss uh, statement, but I, I think that that is exactly how it works is that we form the committee, we get the board members, and then, then it's up to each committee if they wanna add um, community members, and then you, know, you can vet them and then bring them back to the board and, and put them up for approval. So I would encourage people to do that, get the community involved. And I encourage them to attend as well. And, you know, I think a lot of our candidates are, that we had from our non-existing election are interested in participating. I think they would like to be on some of these committees. It would be a good role for, for them uh, to uh, achieve, so. I agree. I think that's an excellent suggestion. So yeah, people that are interested in serving on the board, that's a great way to see what we actually do, right? As opposed to, right, when we actually do some real work to get something done. So good way to be involved. All right, so next I have long range planning. So 
do we have uh, anybody that's interested in volunteering to be the chair of long range planning? I nominate Jim Harris since he's so vested and involved in the current situation. I, I very much appreciate that, but I'm going to decline. Um, what? I think, I think uh, there's an opportunity here for uh, someone else to, um, to grow in that position. And uh, my appointment as a board member is interim anyway. Uh, so uh, the way we had done business at uh, Long Range Planning was to was to formulate plans and try and go through uh, priorities as the year goes on and uh, under an interim appointment. I don't know that that's that's a stewardship that, that I should take on. So I someone who's looking at continuing to being on the board or running for a board seat uh, for reelection. I'm more than happy to support them being the chairman of the committee, but I'd like to uh, decline at this point. Thank you very much. Okay, well, I, I'm disappointed, Jim, but but I understand. So, is there somebody else who is interested in um, taking a leadership role and becoming the chair of long range planning? I mean, I think Margaret could do it. Margaret is pretty involved. I don't, Margaret, would you want to do that? Only if I had some of the existing members, Corla and Cameron and a few others lucky come back on to help. Uh, well, Lucky and, and other board, board members. I need some seasoned veterans under my belt. And, yeah, and, I'd like and, to be on the long range board. And, and, and Margaret, you can count on me to assist you okay. in terms of setting up and, and everything and, 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 uh, and, and getting, getting matters launched. I'm delighted to work with you on okay. that. Okay, and, and that and, helps. And, and provide, some, provide some background for you and things of that nature. No, because uh, I know, I know can, it's can, a lot. You can count on me at any time. Absolutely. Okay, so. then then I would gladly accept if I get Jim help and Coral and a couple other season back. No, I'll I'll be on the committee. Okay, good. All right, then I'll gladly accept. Thank you, sir. Okay, all those in favor of having Margaret be the chair of long range planning, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11. Okay. Unanimous, Margaret. Oh. And Cameron is also a former member, so community-wise, we'll, we'll keep him in the loop on that. So yeah, he doesn't need to resubmit. Who are the members then? It's Jim and let's, Carla. Anyone else? Let's, let's, have a, let's have a show of hands. Who, who, who's willing to help Margaret on long-range planning? Please. <laughs> I need all of you. Thank you, Jim. Okay, got Jim Hare and Lucky. And Corla. Awesome. I will do. Who was the last one? Robert. Robert, okay. Oh, Robert, okay. Oh, good. Cool. Awesome, thank you, Robert. Okay, next up, traffic and transportation. I think we have a nomination of Mandy for traffic and uh, chair. Do we have any anybody else who's interested in tra being the chair of traffic and transportation? All right, seeing none, uh, all those in favor of Mandy being the chair of traffic and transportation. Good luck, Mandy. I think that's unanimous. You got it, Mandy. Thank you. And with that, um, are there board members that are willing to serve on traffic and transportation with Mandy? Me. Margaret? Yes, please. Okay, you're on. Any others? Uh, I will too. Sarah, okay. Yay, Sarah, we need it. It's a good one, guys. It's important. All right, looking at the list of committees, I also I now have the airport committee. And Fred, 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 Fred. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to do it. I'm happy Fred, to do that's it. That's you. I agree with Margaret. I think Fred would I'd like to see you continue to advocate for our, our community in regards to the airport. Okay, I'm, I'm happy to do it. Um, is anybody else interested in being chair of the airport committee? Okay, all those in favor of me being chair of the airport committee. <laughs> all right, we got that as a unanimous too. Any board members want to volunteer to work on the airport committee? I got Margaret and David. 
and I, I will just say as an aside on the airport is that because um, we've had this lull I, and I didn't get to make a report, but I, I think you guys should know is that when they when everything hit in COVID, the FAA decided to change the flight patterns because there was not much traffic and they started flying planes in places they didn't normally fly them. And because uh, I got reports that I, I could see that when I was walking my dog and and I got some community complaints, but I made a formal complaint to um, the airport and to the FAA and it got uh, fully investigated and the FAA admitted that they were not following the, the proper flight plans and, and as a result of that we actually got the system to work and the planes went back on the normal, normal flight, flight schedule. So um, there's no doubt that our community made a difference in that. So. So you're the guy that sent them back over my house, huh? Yeah. Okay. Brad, I, can tell you, I can tell you one thing for sure. No matter how few planes there are, there's still one at 6.30 and there's still one at 11.30. You got it. That's right. <laughs> I mean, our position clearly at that is that, I mean, I mean, well, 6.30 is when they start and they should really, they should have no early turns. They should have no curfew violations. They really, with the, the amount of traffic they have now, they really should be able to follow the rules. So. All right. Uh, we have, okay. Let's go. Um, we have Liberty Station. I don't know if we we haven't really appointed anybody for Liberty Station. I, mean, I don't think. Do we do we need to appoint somebody for, as a Liber Liberty Station later on? I think it was David Dick. It was, um, but uh, I'd be willing. I think Don had some interest in it, but he's not here. That's why I'd asked earlier. But um, he uh, maybe Don would be interested. I know he. He only wants important. park, David. He only wants parks. Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to be continue liaison on Liberty Station and find out what's going on down there with the with the church in particular. I think that's still the hot button down there. There's some other issues, obviously, now that the, with the, the foundation and the arts district tenants. And um, I represent some of the tenants down there, and there are a number of issues down there with people who aren't able to pay rent and some possible, uh, you know, when the courts get back into business, there'll be some, there'll be some issues down there that'll have to be dealt with. So I'd be happy to continue to liaison on that uh, during my interim, um, as I uh, hope mm, for a vaccine earlier. May I be added to some of your information to co with you on Midway? Because I'm super involved right now with some issues with parking and um, residential and business. And I've been in the loop with some of those. Would love to. Things. I know it's been a nightmare. So I'd like to tag team with David if that's okay with everyone. Mm -hmm. to love to do it. Between the two of us. Yeah, because I think Midway, between Midway and uh, Liberty Station, there's yep. probably no more impactful things happening in our area. Uh, well, yeah, so exactly. I just want to make sure that the proposal is clear. So, I mean, I, the way I would look at it is that we would have David be the liaison for Liberty Station, Margaret be the liaison for Midway and then they would agree to work together and exchange information on, on, on the, the joint issues that, that overlap. Mm -hmm. That sound, sound fair? Sure. Great. All right. So let's, let's just separate them out one at a time. So uh, all those in favor of having appoint David as the Liberty Station Chair? Vote. Liaison. Li liaison, sorry, liaison. All right, it appears to be unanimous. And all those in favor of having Margaret be the midway liaison. And again, that appears to be unanimous. And I'd like to make a motion to be the, the liaison for the OB planning board. Nice, good. You don't have to make a motion. You could just nominate yourself. All right, well, I'm nominating myself. <laughs> all right, let's do the OB, uh, liaison to the OB planning board. And we have um, Mandy. Does yes. anybody else want to do that? No. How about everybody in favor of Mandy? Robert? Yes, okay, unanimous. Okay, Mandy, you got that. Thank you. All right, what else do we have? We have, okay, uh, we have parks and recreation. Parks. We know that Don is interested in doing that, and I... Um, Nominate so. Don. Okay. Mandy? Can we, you guys, can we add a co-chair to that? Because I know there are people like Mandy is really, Sarah also expressed interest at one point. Uh, I don't know, I think it'd be good to have two people on that. Because there's so much going on with Park. Just a suggestion. 
Well, Mandy has always has been on there. For, I don't know the last year at least or two. Um, do you want to chair it, Mandy? Since Dawn's not here, would you like to chair that committee as well? I would definitely be interested in it because I think that there needs to be some. Um, Meetings? I'd like to see more meetings in regards to parks. So I'd actually go ahead and nominate myself as the chair of parks. There you go. I'll yeah. withdraw my nomination of Don. <laughs> Just, it's fine. Okay, then. Um, I agree with David. And, and Don can certainly be a member of that committee at any time, whether he's here or not, he can join that committee. Okay, then we, uh, for parks and recreation, we have Mandy nominated as a chair. Any other nominations? I have a question actually. Can we, um, I was going to propose that we continue the environmental ad hoc committee as well. It, should we combine or can we combine parks and environmental or keep them completely separate? I think parks is a standing committee if I'm correct and uh, environmental is ad hoc. Ad hoc committees are formed for a finite period of time. So I think they should be separate. Okay. You are correct, Corla. According to bylaws, it is a standing committee opposed to the newly created environmental, which is ad hoc. So uh, it does seem like they should be separate. So at this point, uh, do we have any other nominations for the chair of Parks and Recreation? All those in favor of having Mandy as chair of Parks and Recreation? That is unanimous. Um, I'm going to put Don down as a as a party that's interested. He can he can withdraw if he doesn't want to, but I'll do that on Don's behalf. Is there anybody else that wants to be on Parks and Recreation with Mandy? I see Margaret. Eva, I think Eva's got her hand oh, up. Okay, Eva too. Okay, got that. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, we do point in a liaison for um, Point Loma Association. We do. And I think that's Robert currently. Would um, Is anybody interested in being the liaison with the Point Loma Association? I nominate Robert Tripp Jackson. <laughs> Okay. You do know their meetings are at 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> oh, I know, and I haven't been very good about following them lately. But um, I'd be more than happy to continue it on since we don't have any other directors that are serving on that board in conjunction of. Perfect. All right. All those in favor of Robert uh, being our Point Loma Association liaison? Looks like it's unanimous. Good job, Robert. Yeah. And I, I think that that covers everything. So I, I think that we should talk about whether um, we want to go ahead and approve the environmental ad hoc committee to continue during the interim um, period. I, it seems to me that it's a it's a good idea. It was a committee that was in place and it'll probably stay in place during the interim. So um, I make a motion to um, keep the environmental ad hoc committee. Do I have a second for Margaret's motion? I second that motion. Okay. Okay, we got a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? All those in favor? And just one quick second, just real quick. I just was a question. I was looking at the me the meetings from the minutes from January, uh, or what was it? Was it? It was January, I guess it was. There was a discussion about the Environmental Committee putting together some kind of a mission statement or some sort of a uh, description of what it wanted to do and, and, and what its purpose and so forth was. Uh, has any of that, uh, I, I'm, I'm, nothing, none of that's happened yet, okay. No, we haven't had an opportunity to have a meeting to discuss that and vote on that. Yeah, that makes sense. That. Okay, good. Under the circumstances, that seems very understandable. Yeah. No, but I would, I would like to, establish, we do need to establish a charter and hopefully in the future, I'd like to make it a permanent subcommittee. Um, I don't think that environmental issues are something that are going to go away from our community. And I think it needs to be in the future, it needs to be a permanent subcommittee. That's my opinion. I have to agree sitting in all these other community meetings, we've got a major issue with storm 
water uh, situations and all sorts of other environmental concerns in Midway Liberty Station and Point Loma. So I definitely think that we need to dabble in that and be part of those conversations um, with other communities. So I think it should or would be a good idea for us to consider it being a standing um, committee. It's certainly certainly worthwhile. We just have, have to do the proper procedure. So we have to get that in place. And so, but for tonight, I think we can approve the ad hoc committee continuing during the interim period. So um, I think without further ado, all those in favor of continuing the ad hoc committee? The ad hoc uh, environmental committee passes unanimously. And so with Are that, we need to, a chair. Um, who seconded that? The chair for the ad hoc committee. Who seconded the motion? Yeah. yeah I think it was Mar Margaret did, I think. Yeah. I know no, Margaret was the, the first. I, sec I seconded it. Okay. 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 Are you seeking nominations for chair, Fred? I am looking for nominations for chair. Okay, I would like to man, uh, nominate Mandy for chair of the Environmental Committee. I'd like to continue to co-chair that with Eva if she's willing to um, co-chair that uh, ad hoc with me. Yeah, I would like. I think we work together really well and I'd like to see that continue. And I believe that that's the current status right now, isn't it? That is correct. Okay. Yes. And I don't see any bylaws that would prevent that. So um, any, any further discussion? No. All right. Okay, all those in favor of approving Mandy and Eva as the co-chairs of the Environmental Ad Hoc Committee. Unanimous, unanimous, congratulations. All right, I, I think we have nominated all our committees. Yay. I, have, I have one more. One more? Uh, can oh. we revisit the Safe Famosa Canyon ad hoc committee? Since we have that still ongoing and there's lots going on that I'd like to share with the board and the community. And I uh, feel the perfect, you know, it's, it'd be great to be able to have some sort of ad hoc committee to kind of communicate professionally the board okay well i'm i'm happy to consider it i think that um i don't know i i just don't know i don't know procedurally if if we can uh create a new committee so i, I don't know if the save Formosa canyon ad hoc committee was in place at the time of the of sort of the interim interruption we so never got rid of it who who is the current chair of it right now then it, it's me that's why i'm asking i've had people I've had community members, to be honest, ask me for updates if, you know, we've communicated with the board and I said we were kind of like at standstill due to the pandemic. Yeah. So I just haven't had any real answers to communicate back to the community. So I wanted to address this with the board first. Well, I, I think it's a, I, you know, obviously I think Formosa Canyon is a huge issue that, that impacts the community and lots of people are, are very concerned about it. So an ad hoc committee in that area is fine. I just want to make sure that we're procedurally everybody's happy uh, with the process, whether, right. whether we can approve it tonight or whether we'd have to put it on the agenda to approve it. Uh, yeah, it's just up to you. I, I, as I said, it's just something that we, I kind of wanted to throw out there and put on our radar um, that there is going to be stuff that comes through to the community that's in regards to Famosa. And it worked out really well, um, you know, having it on this board. So I don't know if anybody else has any feedback or suggestions? Corla? I'm, I'm not opposed to creating a, a committee if you guys want to do it. It would be ad hoc and for a finite period. And it could be created tonight. If we create an environmental, it could be created. My feeling is that we don't need that committee. I, I'm not saying anything against FAMOSA, but we left our letter, we left our position as a board, and it's on record recorded that there was no action the board was going to take until we saw some RFPs. They put out the RFPs and one came in and then nothing happened. So the board position was voted on and the stance was that they were going to wait to see something come forward uh, uh, to uh, take a position and, and or vote on. So in, Again, my, th in my thinking, if, if something came forward, the committee would be able the one to address that first and then bring it back to the board but again yeah, and that's what the committee i'm looking forward to being is not ne necessarily taking action but more of an informative ad hoc um 
as far as we get information from the community and what have you, um, concerns and issues. Um, it is a big deal in our community right now on the peninsula. It affects many different communities um, to not have it uh, be part of a, just a discussion committee for informative purposes. I mean, this is a new board, actually. If you look around, we have some people that are no longer on the board, so technically bringing new information for Famosa would be a positive thing um, with these new board, board members that have decided to come on or the new positions, what have you, um, just to keep it on our radar for discussion at least. Okay, um, David, I saw your hand up. Did you have a comment? Yeah, I, my only comment would be that um, uh, I think the ad hoc committee we had before was not called the save the- No, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to say that. It'd be yeah. from uh, most of Canyon yeah. committee or something like that, but yes, not to, not to put it, you know, a gloss on it that way. And the other thing I would say is procedurally, and I don't frankly care, but procedurally, if it's an action item, you know, it's not on the agenda. Um, and so technically speaking, I think we really can't establish, uh, oh. an so then do we need to remove the environmental ad hoc as well now? Well, I, as I'm saying. <laughs> I went that I let that one go. I just wanted to point out I was going to sort of mention it then, but you know, the, I think the difference, Mandy, is the environmental ad hoc committee is one that still exists. I think there was some discussion about whether the Famosa Canyon ad hoc committee continued to exist after we had made the board's position known and published the letter. And so, in some respects, I think maybe we're creating a new committee. But that's the reason I frankly I don't want to stand on procedure. If we want to create an ad hoc committee to have a, a forum for discussing Famosa Canyon issues. I, I think it's a, I frankly think it's a good idea. We probably ought to have a place where people can go and, and uh, discuss the issues because I suspect that they're going to come back up here in the not too distant. Okay, Lucky, do you have and a That's comment? my only concern, David, was right. for that. Margaret, 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 let, we, I think Lucky was up next, so. Oh, yeah, sorry. I, I just have a, a brief comment and that's uh, noting how fast uh, planning is moving on trying to push through some projects and things now as fast as they can. I, I think it would be incumbent on us to have an existing committee in place rather than uh, have uh, a situation where we might lose an opportunity to weigh in on something just because we hadn't formed the committee yet. I thought, you know, uh, uh, it, it, even if something that lies dormant for a little bit, when you need it, you're going to need it right away. So I, I would say I'd like to do it tonight. Okay. Um, Margaret? Oh, sorry. Thank you, Fred. I just wanted to reiterate, I think, David, I. I do understand. I think we made the environmental committee for one year, just like the FAMOSA until the following term, which of course we're in the situation. But yeah, the committee is just to um, gather concerns and communicate and uh, kind of communicate um, to the board um, where we're at and the status and all that good stuff. That's all it's for. All right, uh, Corla. Yeah, and I think uh, procedurally, uh, David, technically you're correct, but I think the intent uh, on number four on our agenda in election of interim board officers was also to reform the committees. It just didn't get typed out there, but that was the intent of, you know, to get the business done for this meeting today. Okay, and then I, I have... Um... Cameron, I don't know if he's still here, but Cameron seemed to want to make a public comment, so I, I would allow Cameron to make a public comment if he wanted to. So, no, uh, all, all my thoughts uh, have already been pretty much reiterated uh, with everything. It's just uh, uh, the problem that we had before when the committee was created was we didn't necessarily define what the end state of the, of the committee would be. So we never, uh, the board never voted to say that uh, the letter was going to be the definitive end or there was going to wait for a proposal and i think that's where the confusion is coming from and you got to remember we, we did this way back almost a year ago now and so um i had to go pull some notes and my notes we never gave it a definitive end time and i think that's where all the confusion is coming from and so uh it's just something we'll have to be careful of moving forward i, I think it's it's um there's an active proposal out there we're negotiating with a uh, person right now a contractor um and there's been a lot of ins and outs and just as lucky said um i think when something comes down the pipe it's going to come down quick and and uh the board's going to need to react quickly or at least have that available to uh react quickly to a proposal because the way things are going right now it, it looks like they're going to try to shove something through regardless so, all right uh, david Cameron, let me just ask you a question because you just said something that 
I wasn't aware of, and maybe Margaret you can, or Cameron, you can uh, expand on it. But when you say a contractor, you mean a developer, somebody who actually comes in with a plan to develop the property um, that the, the planning commission or the, uh, the housing commission is, is in discussions or negotiations with? Yes, they negotiations right now close out to the public. They did get, um, uh, from my research, they uh, gave a $2 million enticement to get a uh, proposal by a developer, and you're correct, not a contractor. I'm sorry, David. Uh, um, yeah, I just uh, to be clear. Yeah. Yeah, no, we definitely need to be clear. So yes, a uh, developer um, did put forth a proposal. They've been in negotiations since March, um, and they've been pretty tight-lipped with us on uh, anything since then. It, it also happened around the COVID time. And so um, the only thing I've been able to verify is they do have a proposal. They um, had a, some sort of $2 million uh, enticement fee associated with that proposal, and that they've been in negotiations, and negotiations are at least six months long, if not longer, and that they legally cannot tell the community or the public anything that's going on with those negotiations. Okay, I, I, I'm comfortable that um, the idea of re, uh, reforming the uh, Famosa Canyon Ad Hoc Committee is consistent with the, with the agenda and item number four and sort of the spirit of what we want to do. So sure. can, can we get a motion and a second on that? I'll make a motion to keep right. the Famosa Canyon Ad Hoc Committee. Do we have a second? Margaret? I second, right. thank you. All right, do we have any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of uh, reforming the uh, Famosa Canyon Ad Hoc Committee? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It appears to be unanimous. All right, there we go. All right, so now, who wants to be the uh, chair of the Famosa Canyon Ad Hoc Committee? Margaret? I had a co-chair, so if everyone agrees to Cameron being my co-chair, that would be great. I, I, I don't think so. I think you have to be a board member, too. Yeah. So he was my co-chair last, last... I don't know how you guys did before, but to, he can be a mm. member, but you have to chair. I think that that's I'll probably... Gladly chair. <laughs> and he can do all the work. He'll I mean, do all the work. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, it, it, you know, it's, <laughs> it's his baby. Okay, so uh, anybody else besides Margaret want to be the chair of the Famosa Canyon Com Ad Hoc Committee? Okay, all those in favor of having Margaret as a chair? Nobody wants it. That appears to have unanimously passed also. Very good. All right, Margaret, congratulations. And uh, are there any board members that want to work on that Ad Hoc Committee with Margaret? I got Robert Tripp Jackson, David Dick. Thank you. All right, and then you can work, Cameron, you can get on as a uh, community member, I would imagine, no problem. <laughs> Fred, quick question. Um, sure. did, we, did we ask if anyone wanted to join environmental committee? Any board members want to join? I might have skipped over that. So why don't, that's a great question. So we have uh, Mandy and Eva as co-chairs. Who, who else would like to participate on the environmental? Ad hoc committee. I got Margaret. Anybody else besides Margaret? On Sarah. <laughs> oh gosh, this, this the secretary thing is a lot of work too. So uh, I'll join when I can. <laughs> All right. Well, you got Margaret for sure, and, and Sarah as as as, uh, also as she's available. Harris can are coming that week too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any other any other uh, committees, ad hoc committees, liaisons that we need to appoint? Did we did we do governance? That was an ad hoc committee, and I don't know. I I, I don't know if um, Corla was the chair of that. I don't know if, if that's something that should continue during the interim. He period. was the current chair, but I'm just saying if anything comes comes through the pipelines from here until elections, I mean, you kind of need. I don't think Corlett seems to be not interested. I, I would think that if there's some special need that comes up at that point, then we can we can always form it. But I don't know if we necessarily need to have a standing committee. David, if you have a comment. I, I don't think we need a committee. It isn't a standing committee. I don't think we need an ad hoc committee until something comes up. We can form one for that purpose. The one thing 
and, and this is something I've been thinking about at, in connection with the election, if this situation continues, you know, have, being able to have an in-person election where people actually come to a polls, you know, touch a pen, touch paper, you know, interact with human beings in real time, that's going to be hard to do, I think, for any time in the near future. I think it would be an interesting thing to, to look at as to whether there's any way we can actually do a virtual election, whether it's online or it's mail or it's some yeah. other form of election. Then I think maybe the governance committee, maybe we'd need to have some sort of ad hoc committee to mm -hmm. study that. Um, and uh, I think we might want to do that because I think it could be a long time before we have an election. So um, that's my only thought about a governance committee. So my suggestion would be, let's hold on it. That's the one thing I think we probably may need to do. And so let's hold on it until we do. Yeah. Comfortable with that. That's good. That's very good. So, Lucky? I, I have a question when you mentioned long time until we have an election. So what is really this, when we say this phrase, some of us are temporarily interim filling a seat. Could that be two years? before you have a face-to-face -face election? I think, Lucky, that well, I, the way I would look at it, and I, I mean, we, we, I think we should have a discussion. Everybody should think about it. But I mean, I think that the interim is until, until March of next year. That's in my mind, because that's when the next election is scheduled. And it seems like something will be resolved by then. If, if something's not resolved by then, I mean, my proposal would be that we would we'd sort of reevaluate what we want to do. And we, did, we could have an agenda item to talk about it. But I, I think that, you know, for now, I would sort of say that interim is, you know, whenever we have an election, if it's before March or, or March the latest. But open ideas. And Jim, did you have an idea? Yeah, just just very briefly, um, the 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 council uh, adopted uh, urgency measures related to council policy 600-24 that presumably will lift at some point. And when they lift, everything snaps back to. Our bylaws snap back into full effect and all those things. So what my presumption is that once the urgency associated with the pandemic is lifted, that the council would take that action and that that would be a signal to us that we need to, we need to do it. Now, if we can get, a, a, and I agree with David, I think, I think uh, exploring the possibilities of conducting an election and making a normal transition, that's something that we should look for an opportunity to do at the earliest convenience. I just don't know how that looks and how it goes. And maybe we need to continue to have conversations about that. Thank you. Yep. Okay, let's try to get, we'll try to get through the rest of the agenda here. So uh, the next item is sort of the action item discussion is the um, determination of options to use Zoom for uh, planning board meetings. Corla, that's your item. I'm a, okay, um, Zoom to me is a lot easier to use than WebEx. I've done some WebEx meetings and it's, I think it's a bit cumbersome. Um, I think we should continue using Zoom this way. I did some research and studying and I was hoping to be able to um, allow our, we have a licensed account that I've been paying for uh, through Zoom. And that gives us unlimited time and a lot of other nice features. And I, I don't, you know, I just, it's just nice to have. However, I can't add another host to that unless someone else has a licensed account. Does anybody on the board have a licensed Zoom account? Okay, so, so we have options on Zoom. It's costing right now about $12 a month, which is pretty good because it's usually 15. I don't know if it's got a special, but they just charged again. It was another 12. It's supposed to be 15 a month or 149 a year, but if we can get away with $12 a month, that's good. I need to uh, have approval to pay for that. I don't want, I didn't mind paying for the first one, but I don't want to pay for it. In per <laughs> uh, and uh, then we need to figure out how our committees are going to meet. Now, Zoom has free, there's a free Zoom, but it's a 40 minute limit. And there's ways around that. You can set up two meetings concurrently, and then when your 40 minutes runs out, you go to your next 40. Or I don't mind hosting meetings as an awful lot of committees. Um, I'm not really sure I want to host all of those committees, um, but I'm willing to host as much as I can uh, 
to allow the committees to meet on the licensed account, or y'all can figure out how to use the free Zoom. So that's that's what I know, and that's what's open for discussion. Uh, any uh, any comments? I mean, I think the Zoom works very well, so I, I I like it. It seems like everybody can operate it. Yeah. So do we well, want to make a motion to reimburse those? Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I believe that 40 minute uh, time limit you got, that almost starts when the first person logs on or the, uh, so you got to be very careful uh, uh, who, who's ever running it, doesn't let the meeting start early because that all comes off of that 40 minute end. Exactly. And that would be up to the committee chairs to deal with that if they wanted to have that. Like, you know, it, it just depends. Like you what what comes up you know i sit on project review so obviously i'll host that and um you know like liberty station like we're, we're really not going to need much on that that could be done in a 40 minute zoom most of them so you know the, the committee chairs can e either get with me and we can figure something out or uh, whatever um you know whatever Cam cameron's got his hand up for something there well I, i'm gonna go for uh is there any other board comment first how much is the bill? It's like, it's $12 a month. I can, so I, don't, I, don't for, really I can, I can pay for the rest of the month, a year and make well, it that's up to you. Cause the next item is uh, going to be reim reimbursement on that. But you know, we have right now, and this I'm getting out of order, but it, it all, this all relates to this. Uh, our balance is $657.81. And the only reason we have that much money in our account is because we didn't have an election, we didn't have to spend it. So we do have money to fund that. And then that money is gonna go away pretty quickly when we have an election. Um, so, you know, I, I think maybe at this point, unless there's further discussion, I'd like to make a motion to that we fund Zoom for the year, or do you want to pay for it, Margaret? I mean, I will second it. Yeah. And then if I can, if I, and then I'll work with you to write it off. Is that fair? It, whatever you, if you wanted to make a donation or something, you can do yeah, that. Yeah, I don't mind making the donation to pay for the remainder of the year. Just so we can all use it. I have my own Zoom account, yeah. so I'll be good with hosting my committee meetings, um, but yeah, it'd be nice to have a PCPB one where Fred, if he needs to, you know, use, use it for whatever cool. the chair needs, you know, just. So you have a licensed Zoom account that you pay for? I do, my own, yeah. And then you, you can co-host, you can host and co-host any meeting. I can yes. add you to the PCPB account. So anybody that has a paid Zoom account, I can set them up to be a host of a meeting. You're doing a great job at it though. Yeah, I just don't want to do all the community. Yeah, no, I get it. I, I understand. <laughs> I understand. All right, so is, is the motion to uh, reimburse Corla for the Zoom cost for the remainder of the year? I think it was to go ahead and use the funds in the account to pay for the rest of the year. Okay. Corla? Yes, that's that's how I would state it. Uh, to uh, and and that would be, I would say as we were discussing earlier with um, interim officers, interim board positions, and all that until like through March when we normally have our elections, uh, and then we reevaluate what's happening at that point. That that's how I would yeah. phrase that motion. Okay. Any other board comment? Nope. I second that motion. Okay by Corla and second by Margaret. I have public comment. It looks like Cameron's had his hand up for a while. You have public comment, Cameron? Just real quick, I think you guys are kind of going down the road. I was just gonna say, why don't you just get a generic PCPB account and then just have the board pay for the, the annual fee and then whatever chair needs it can just uh, work with either the chair or the first vice chair, whoever controls it, get the login information and host whatever meeting they're doing. I, I, um, and then that way it'd be just a limited number of people who have access to it. But I think it's just generic. Well, we can, uh, work, on, we can work on that. I, I tried that I because I set it up in the register at PCPB. I, that's linked to my credit card. And, you know, there was no other way to do that. There might be a way to change that. 
Um, but I don't know how to do that yet. I'm not sure. I just this month discovered a, a lot of new things. So, uh, mm. yeah, so it, it's a process. I agree. I think we've all learned a few, few things this year, <laughs> last few months. All right. Well, I think the Zoom meetings have been very helpful, so I, it seems appropriate. So uh, let's take a vote. Ha, ha, all those in favor of approving using PCPB funds to uh, fund the Zoom meetings. It appears to be unanimous. Unanimous. Okay. And I'd like to make a little statement to Josh. Hello, Josh. Um, to if he would take back to council that all the planning boards are having to use their little $500 stipend for these type of things now, and maybe it might be nice if we could get some extra funding for uh, our meetings. Yeah, I actually was making a note to follow up. I we have the Microsoft Teams that we use at the city. I don't know why they don't offer that to you all to use. I know Zoom is a little bit more uh, user friendly, but I'm, I'm happy to bring that back. I think that's a good point. You all should have to be using your funds for this. Thank you. Okay, informational item number one, uh, the press release uh, by council member Jen Campbell on regulating short term rentals and that's uh, Corla. Well, I'm going to defer to Josh. Uh, I'll, I have to say, I'll start out by saying there's a lot of stuff going on. And I think uh, unfortunately, I think the city and the state are trying to shove a lot of things through during this pandemic uh, uh, with some type of urgency, and I don't feel like we have a chance for meaningful input. Uh, but Mandy, Margaret, and I have all been to a lot of meetings lately, and um, Josh has been at the majority of those, and he, I think he's got a little presentation about Dr. Campbell's um, STDR press release and some information for us. All right, go ahead, Josh. Yeah, I, I don't have a formal presentation, but thanks for the opportunity to weigh in and just clarify and also explain a little bit more about the press release and some of the conversations. Um, I, I do know that there is a sense of urgency, but I do want to just back up a little bit and let folks know a little bit more about the timeline as it relates to what we expect to see in terms of this, this process. Um, we did uh, have a conversation with the Expedia Group as well as a local union here in the city, Unite Here. Um, we anticipate, though, that this proposal is at the very early stages as we begin to start this conversation. Um, we anticipate this proposal will need to have review by the Planning Commission, by, the, by a City Council um, committee, probably the Land Use and Housing Committee. It will then need to go to full council for approval, and then we'll also need to probably go to the Coastal Commission after that. So while I understand that there is some general urgency and some uh, desire to get involved and make sure that we don't get away from this. I do want to let folks know that this is the very beginning of the process and this is a, a proposal and a starting place. So I just want to ground us in that level of comfort that this conversation is just beginning and I appreciate that you all are, are willing to be involved. Um, the council member asked me to convey that she's happy to come to a meeting in the future to discuss if that's needed. Um, but uh, I'm happy to, to talk broadly about the proposals and the regulations if that, that's of interest to the group. Do we have any questions? Brad? Um, <clears throat> and in reading the, I think it was the email and response to some of the criticisms that uh, Dr. Campbell uh, had, um, at the bottom of the letter, I thought it should have been qualified at the beginning, but now, there was some perception that the city feels it's though it is somewhat exposed because they haven't, they haven't uh, enforced the, the code. And that's why we're trying to get some rules in place instead of just saying a flat no, these are not allowed. Is, uh, I mean, could you, I think you understand what I'm trying to say. I do. The council member feels that this, this is a, a compromise to keep us out of the courtroom and out of the ballot box. And so we feel that this is a starting place to have all the key players in one room to really allow us a conversation on what we feel is an appropriate um, beginning to the conversation. I think a lot of folks want to compare what we have now to what we're experiencing to um, you know, what the proposal is. 
Um, we currently only have the regulation that if you're renting under uh, 30 days, you have to have a TOT certificate, a TOT uh, business tax certificate uh, similarly. And you know the, the enforcement's few and far between because we just don't have the staff to keep up with it. And that's why PD is running around uh, with some of the lower level questions or, co or concerns that come up. Um, but I would say that this is the beginning point of the, of the compromise to discuss what we can do to actually add full regulations with permitting guidelines uh, and then some enforcement teeth. I hope that answers your question, Brad. Right, and and to then, some degree, I think it's just the way that it was, it was, my understanding was that the city attorney thought that if they tried to enforce the code as written, that, uh, you know, these are single family communities and you basically have a hotel there, that that's, that they feel as though then you're going to get a Airbnb and VRBO uh, funding people's objection to that is, 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 is that why we're, tr we're trying to go this route because we we're just going to open the city up to a potential lawsuit. If we try to make people enforce the specific code as written. I think that's where we're at right, right now. And that's why I think we're trying to find a compromise to stay out of the right. courtroom and out of the ballot box. All right. Okay. Uh, on the order of hands, I, saw, I thought I saw Eva and then I saw Lucky. So Eva, do you have a question? Um, not as much a question as a comment. Um, Josh, you mentioned that this was being put forth, um, you know, bringing some of the major stakeholders to the table. And I'd like to just point out that the big stakeholder is being left off the table and that's the community. That is us living in the beach communities. And I feel like we've not been, or the community has not been given a chance participate in the process or voice our concerns. This just really smacks of a sort of a, a backroom deal that is being struck between Dr. Campbell's office and VRBO or the Airbnb um, corporations. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you, Eva. I believe that she's left the uh, community off off the um out of the conversation and it, in my perception i just felt like she was telling us what she was doing it wasn't you know how can we change or, or change us it was more like we're we've allowed this to happen we've disobeyed the law of the land and now we're gonna give these people a new law to help them be legit and i i, I again i i just don't see that this has anything to do for the community, but it has everything to do for special interests. And again, we're being sold out to be some sort of tourist attraction or Disneyland for adults. And you're, you're selling out our community. And I, I think Dr. Campbell needs to respect the inputs and really respect the community that, and, and fulfill the promises that she made when she ran she made some promises to our community, and unfortunately, it's not looking like she's being honest. And, gotcha. and that's very concerning as a community member. And then at that, here we are elected members. We're volunteers on this board. And the fact that it was an afterthought, it was just rushed in. Um, it wasn't even brought to the board or even presented uh, for inputs. Um, the lack of communication from District 2 is alarming. And so I would like to um, ask that I be put on that distribution list, please, so that we can get more communication from Dr. Campbell going forward. But I want to let you know that our community uh, is not very happy. Word on the street is she's not um, in the good graces of the community. That's all I have to say. Josh, did you want to respond to those comments? Sure. Um... Thank you for the, the comments and I, I um, Mandy, you're welcome to sign up for our newsletter on the, the, the Dr. Campbell's website. I'm happy to also forward you the, the newsletter that comes out. There uh, is plenty of opportunity for communication as well. I've attended most of the meetings and while I won't take those comments personally, I understand everyone has their own, uh, their own opinions. I'm happy to take those back as well. Um, I think that this is a, a conversation that's been going on long before we took office and I wanna say that we were able to put together some conversation and talking points about what we see as a solution to the problem. Uh, this has been going on for well over five years. And so 
the, um, I won't also pretend to not know what you all feel about STVRs uh, since I started working in Point Loma a year and a half ago. So um, <laughs> while I appreciate the, the I appreciate the point of wanting to have the community involved, I think that's why we're here and and you've elected us to put together a proposal to work on, on your behalf and we're here and I'm here for your input. And so while I, I respect that, I, I think now's the time for, for, for that to, to begin. So okay. I, I think that's, uh, that's my response. All right, Lucky, did you have a question? Yeah, we'll... I had a couple of questions. First off, are, are we talking about, I don't know if you can see it, this, this memo from her, are we talking about the thing that has the union information on the front of it? Um, that's a good question, Lucky. I think that the email, the first response that, you, oh, I'm sorry. It's, it, it, that looks more like a letter, if you can see it at all. The second document I was wondering about, there's one here that talks uh, about, uh, uh, it's similar, but different. So which one is the, is the group talking about, first one or second one? Uh, there's both. One, the, could you hold them up a little higher? Yeah, Lucky? sure. I'll see if I can actually get it. There's okay, that one it was the response to the, the, the community's uh, uh, reaction to that press release that you have in your hand right now. This press release, this okay, yeah, that's number one. That's okay, the press one, release. Yeah. The other one is the email. Okay, well, I, I, I like that. I, I will address number one then first. Uh, first off, it's uh, uh, it, it's interesting here how tightly the council uh. Uh, a person has uh, started to align herself with the union element. I find that very, very not encouraging. Um, also on the, on the second page, if I can be allowed to read, it, they talk about uh, capping whole, uh, whole home STR, STRs at 0.7% of the city uh, housing stock. And this is, then they say based on Sandag, and I won't get into you about figures based on Sandag because that's about as, yeah, never mind. The Sandag couldn't, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, then it goes on to annual uh, demographic and uh, uh, socioeconomic housing estimates, which would equate to 3,750 uh, permits today. But if you go down to uh, an, an item, four items down, starting with adopting, adopting the mission team uh, Mission Beach's town council recommendation to uh, permit up to 30% of the housing units in the community to be used as a whole. In that community. In that community, which is 1,086. Then you read, which will be in addition to the citywide cap. So if you're saying the citywide cap is 3,750 up here, then you're adding another 1,086 to the, if I've read this correctly, you're adding 1,086 to that number Josh, am I right about this so far? Yeah, seems like it. Anyway, okay. Anyway, so so you're and then you're up here uh, going up. To, you're saying we're reducing whole form STRs by seventy percent. Well, if you use the thirty-seven fifty number, you get one percentage, seventy percent. But if you use the forty-eight thirty-six number, you don't get seventy percent the way you're touting it. And that's just my first reading of that. And, uh, uh, and I'm not seeing here how it definitely talks about how permit fees will be tied into uh, monies for enforcement. It has some vague reference to that, but I don't, I don't see where, you know, you're, you're gonna have a, a police squad that does this paid it for out of, uh, out of uh, fees. Um, and then whatever happened to Airbnb in this thing? Why weren't they able to bring them into it? You talk about, uh, all the people at the table, you left one of the biggest ones uh, outside the door. They're not in. They're, they're not as part, what's that? I, I, I'm sorry, you've, I'll, I'll be done here in just a second. Uh, so I, I, uh, I, I really found it interesting here how many times it's also uh, referred to how many union jobs she's gonna send. I really got a feeling that uh, uh, the good doctor may be turning into a union sellout here. So I'm pretty disappointed in her. I voted for her. I don't think I'd do it again. Thank you. I'm done. Uh, Eva, you have a question or a comment? I have a comment, if, if, if you can bear with me. Um, the, the solution that is now being offered by Dr. Campbell and her office is completely contrary to the platform she ran on and the reason many of us voted for her. 
This is a complete, you know, 180 to what we were led to believe she would do for our community. Um, you know, additionally, she, she ran on sort of a platform of being a healthcare professional and understanding the, the needs of, of a community. We're now finding ourselves in the midst of a global pandemic, a true healthcare crisis that affects so many in our community. And as a fellow healthcare professional, I can tell you this has made a huge impact on so many individuals and so many families that are finding themselves unemployed, underemployed, uninsured, having a hard time paying their rent, keeping their mortgages um, current, yet we're not, we're taking away from the housing stock and continuing to increase housing prices by making it lucrative to rent to basically running hotels rather than opening up housing to our community. And with that, hopefully bringing down rents and prices. Um, Corla? A quick comment. I attended the Teams meeting with Dr. Jen. Mandy and I were both there. And then I was at the OB ad hoc uh, short-term vacation rental uh, committee meeting um, one of these recent days, whatever day it was. Um, and uh, this might be better served in committee. But what I will say I'd like to say to the board is that um, a regulation is better than nothing, but all the community members that I've heard from are all still, they all still want it banned. They want the, t the law in force that, that city attorneys said they were illegal back in 2007. And there, everybody's worried about a lawsuit and a community member has informed me that there could be case precedent where a lawsuit might not, not even be brought forth uh, considering you know, when new administration takes over and start enforcing laws on the books, blah, blah, blah. I'm not a lawyer. It's not something I really understand. You guys probably do better. But um, the, the, the majority of the community wants a ban and maybe this better served in committee. Okay, so I, I mean, if I was to summarize, I think, Josh, uh, the community is very concerned about this issue and, and there's concern that uh, uh, Jen Campbell's uh, should communicate more with the community and with the planning board. So I'd encourage you to, to take steps in that direction. And, um, and we'd, we'd be, we'd welcome the opportunity to work with you so that we get our input. Sure. Thank you all. Okay. All right. Next up, we got the, um, the uh, community planners committee input on right, the complete uh, community's uh, proposal. So Corla, you're, you're going to head that one up too? I'm going to say the same thing I did before. Josh, you're up. <laughs> oh, okay, great. <laughs> I think this will get popular too. I'm happy to defer to the planning department, but I'll tell you, I'm the midway guy. I don't know about the, the others, but um, the complete communities plan, as you all know, um, you, you know, has been certainly a topic of conversation, something that the, the council members been been interested on. Um, you know, I, I'm again, happy to ensure that the planning department can come give you a full presentation, but I can tell you what we know. And that that is a, an opportunity for us to really uh, re-examine. Uh, sorry, uh, an opportunity to really uh, examine how we look at um, access to parks, uh, also access to diff spending. Um, access to a lot of other opportunities that exist within the, the complete communities plan. Some of it is in response to state law. Um, I'll tell you that we are currently managing several concerns uh, that, that the city has put forward on complete communities. Um, we anticipate th that it will come back to committee or uh, in some format uh, have an opportunity for the public to weigh in again before it goes to full council. Um, but this is, uh, I think, it's a, it's folks feel that it's a lot too quickly. And, um, you know, I think that is something that we're going to, we're going to continue to look at. I'm happy to take specific questions that folks have the parks, the parks element of the complete communities umbrella was just presented to the public safety and livable neighborhoods committee yesterday. So, uh, these are, these are specific elements from housing to parks, to mobility, to dip spending. Um, and the mayor's prerogative is to ensure that there is equal access uh, to, you know, reshape our city and how we, we look at the, those types of solutions. So this is not a council initiative. This is not a Dr. Campbell initiative. This is me speaking with the information that I know. 
this is a staff initiative that has been presented to us. So I'm um, happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, um, I'm gonna have questions. I, I will note, Josh, that I did get some emails from community members who expressed mm -hmm. concerns about it and how that, that they're concerned that, the, that this uh, changes the con contours of the communities. And, and, and so I, I think it's an important yep. issue. And I, I personally would be interested in having a presentation by the planning department. And so yeah, I'd I think be that's great. As people make comments, if the board would be interested in seeing, I think it would be a good idea. So, sure. Uh, with that, I think Coralie's hand went up first. Okay, so now I, I I missed the Jim CPC meeting, but I was at their uh, special meeting, uh, and I was and also I was at the Midway meeting yesterday. Um, the the comment period for this complete communities ended in June fifteenth, and we weren't even really reformed then. So again, I, I'm, I'm unhappy that they're, you know, they're trying to push this through and nobody seems to know about it. Um, I tried to join that Parks and Recs meeting yesterday and couldn't get through, kept getting an error message. And I believe CPC was gonna call in, but I haven't heard back from the CPC people yet. Uh, the- I can um, send you a link to the recording. Just, uh, just so folks have it. Yeah. Is it. Was not the presentation tonight the same time as our meeting on that complete communities? Is that not what's going on now? No, that was just a community feedback uh, session for the like a and a session. It was not any sort of like motion or change. It was just an opportunity for the community to weigh in. Gosh, can you send that to me too? Because I was on park and rec and I haven't got anything. Yeah, I, I'm actually going to send Fred a few follow-up items, both related to SDRs and this uh, this item, so he can send it out to the entire board. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Well, that parks master plan is a big deal. It's too much. I, I've had too much going on. I, I haven't been able to read it, but I, there's there's one element that I object to uh, on this, and, and we can talk more uh, uh, thoroughly uh, with a, if we have a further presentation. But there's one part of it, um, and OB and Midway have all really weighed in heavily on on this as well, but. Um, there's a, a part in there that says that they can put their affordable housing within a mile of the development. And that could, number one, put them out of the, into two different planning districts, as well as, does anybody remember the downtown project where they were gonna have the market rate housing in one building and the affordable in the other building? It seems discriminatory to me. Now, that's my comment. But what, but what I have to say is that CPC, as well as the o Ocean Beach Planning Board, La Jolla, OB, everybody's been working on this except us because we're just starting to get going. Uh, they've done a lot of legwork and research and they've run the numbers and determined that there are serious limitations with this draft plan. CPC issued uh, another press release uh, and they're requesting the city not dock at this plan until all planning groups can have the opportunity to weigh in. They also request everyone send their comments and or objections to all city council members, especially Chair Georgette Gomez. Um, and I just think we need time to weigh in. DK from the Midway group yesterday, his comment about CPC was that they didn't like any of it. And I don't think that's true, but I think everybody just wants a chance to weigh in. And we don't want this docketed. There, there's meeting after meeting after meeting that's happening about things and, and um, we just don't have the opportunity to weigh in. Thank you, I'm done with that. Do we have other board comments? I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to the public comment. Cameron, you're up. Thanks, Fred. So I encourage everyone on the board to actually go onto the city's website on Click Communities. They actually have quite a thorough uh, plan up already, and there's a lot of information. So really, Josh, what I'm concerned with is the whole emphasis of Complete Communities is based off State Bill 237 which says that they want to reduce the vehicle's miles of travel by the different areas. And so they, uh, their goal is to get 85% of baseline. I couldn't find anything on what determined the baseline, but basically they broke the city into four different zones, VMTs, one, two, three, and four. Zones one, two, three were already in compliance and had less than 85% of baseline and were already compliant. Point Loma, Ocean Beach, uh, and most of the coastal communities found that, that that uh, area already. And what concerned me was in those communities that were already compliant, instead of rewarding these communities, they wanna increase the RAF up to four and even higher if they can and break through the 30 foot rule. He says, he says excuse to break through the 30 foot rule to increase densification in these coastal communities, even though they're already in compliance. 
And the other disturbing thing I found, uh, I realized after reading uh, the city's plan was that, and the whole point of the SB uh, State Bill 247 was to reduce uh, miles traveled in the VMT, VMT area score. And that's where you exceed uh, the current baseline. And nowhere has the city done anything. Matter of fact, the city on their website says, we're not gonna do anything in this, in this area that's already uh, the whole impetus of this. We're not gonna do anything there. We're just gonna densify our coastal communities to so put more people in our coastal communities so that our numbers uh, come down overall and we achieve that 85% baseline on the vehicle's miles traveled. And I know this had come up before and I'm, I'm really concerned that uh, Areas that uh, do need to reduce their vehicles miles traveled aren't even being targeted in the, instead the city's taking the easy way out and just intensifying the, the coastline. And with a uh, wrap of four, that would easily exceed the 30 foot rule and go around the world to people. Thank you for hearing me out. Okay. Okay, thanks Cameron. So yeah, if, if Josh, if you can forward me some information both on short-term rentals and on complete communities, I will definitely distribute those to the board. And I guess what I would encourage, now that we've got the board back up and running, we can start to get involved. I mean, these touch on a lot of different committees. So you peop the people that have volunteered to be chairs, I mean, I think it, it affects long range planning, it, it uh, affects midway liaison, it affects, it affects traffic. And, and so, you know, as we get this information and we get the committees going, I would encourage people to start thinking about how this impacts it and, and, and so we can, Guess it more. Brad, did you have a, a comment? Yeah, I'm just wondering um, uh, regarding the uh, state legislation and some of these press releases that were included in this. Um, uh, that's one of the reasons that Miller and Ms. Volk were uh, uh, invited. I don't know if they have anything to add to that would help us at least initially start to understand um, these issues. All right, well, I will, I'll, I'll ask either Miller or uh, Ms. Falk if they would like to make a comment. Yeah. I, I'd be happy to talk about um, the housing bills if, if we're switching over from that or to that from complete communities, definitely. Basically, are you saying, Miller, that you don't have any input on this complete communities? That's just a, a city matter. You're now a state guy. Didn't say that. <laughs> I, I said I have a, a planned um, planned remarks on the housing bills, but if you have specific questions for our office, just okay. I don't do housing for our office. Um, so the com complete communities issue is being watched by our housing staffer, but I'd be happy to try to answer anything or bring back um, questions you guys have and, and email them to our New chair, congrats, Fred, by the way, Thank and you. everyone else on their positions. Well, yeah, if you could ask, add, your, if you could um, ask your, your housing people if they have, if they have input, I, I think that would be helpful to the board and I'd be happy to receive it and distribute it. Sure. How, and uh, Fred, is that in regards to the complete communities or is that in regards to the state housing legislation? Well, I'll take them both, but I think we're, we're really focusing right now on the complete communities. Okay. The housing um, will be next in a minute here. Brad, I have a question. Go ahead, David. Um, it's sort of for Cameron and Mandy. Um, Cameron, I, I'm not familiar with, with what you were talking about, and Mandy, I hadn't seen what you held up. Um, oh, it was a map. I apologize. I was just... Uh, no, no, it would be helpful. It Is was... It uh, the mobile zones is basically this map is the first map that shows the FAR tiers that they've designated for the city. As you can see on the coastal, it's 4%. And then what Cameron's talking about on this map, if you look in the blue area, that's the areas that they're wanting. Uh, that, those are tiers two, three, and four. And those are the areas that they're wanting to densify. But as you look at the map, you can see a, lot, a massive part of yellow especially if you look close on the peninsula, look up there, that's not being required to change our FAR or densify. But that same area is contributing to the VMT substantially. And so the concern is if this was created to help mitigate vehicle miles traveled, um, why, is, why are they not looking to densify those areas in yellow as well, especially when 
tiers two, three, and four, the blue areas have already met their 85%. They've met their goals for the VMT. And then the second issue that I have, I will bring this up regarding mobility. The issue I have is how do they calculate vehicles mile traveled? Because if you live on the coast or you've been in Southern California, you can be you can travel one mile and it can take you several minutes or possibly hours depending what day of the week you know and so i'd like to understand and get clarification on how they calculate the vehicles mile traveled i believe that it might need to look into the emissions that are emitted that would be a better um indicator of what's being uh the impact on the on the communities rather than the vehicles mile traveled where do you find that information that you have? I haven't seen that. In that any would be from the Complete Communities um, link. Uh, Josh, can you it's please on, provide that to the group? The, I, I, I can email it to everyone. It's, it's on yeah. the city's website. They got it all over the place. And, and Bandy, it's, it's uh, BMT uh, mobile building on one, two, and three. Uh, uh, four is out of compliance. And, and that's kind of what my whole problem with this whole thing is, is the, the areas that are not in compliance already for vehicle miles traveled, the city's not doing anything about. And the reason why this concerns the state level is this is the city's response to S-State Bill 237. And so uh, what they're trying to do is bring down the total miles of travel. And the, the thing is, the state bill 237 said that the line is, the level of service no longer requires, like how easy it is to drive to traffic, it's how many miles. They don't care if it takes you a half hour to drive one mile. They care that you only drive one mile. And so it, I think they're kind of looking at it uh, backwards as far as emissions go. But um, I digress. And, uh, you know, and the point being is, is that the city is just trying to flood the coastal zones with uh, more densification to bring down the city's overall uh, vehicle miles travel below the 85% baseline. And then that way they don't have to do anything in these mobility zones before. And in the rally situation, the state is trying to get us to address things like public uh, transportation in mobility zones. So um, I think the I think we're just taking the easy way out on that. And then, uh, uh, but anyways, I, I hope that answers your your question, David. Yeah, I just, um, maybe Fred, if you could, or uh, with the assistance of whoever it was, Josh or Cameron, I, whoever, maybe not Josh, but maybe one of the, whoever whoever has the ability to circulate those uh, uh, links to the, to the information, because yeah. I'm not familiar with any of that. I'd like to see it. Yeah, yeah Josh so did add the link to the chat box. So if you go there, you can um, click on that link to oh. get more information as well. Great, perfect, thanks. All right, and, and if you have other, if, if Cameron or other people have things that they think are important, you know, if you send it to me, I'll take a look at them. And if it appears to be an, a good informational item, give me a little description so I know what it was and I, I'm happy to distribute it to the board so that everybody can uh, get it. Great, thanks Cameron for doing that. All right, I, again, I think that was a good discussion. Um, I'd like to, to move on so we, we stay on some schedule. And so we have our next informational item, which also the seems to be a hotbed uh, item, which is a sports arena redevelopment proposal concept. So Margaret, you're up. Uh, we also, Fred, sorry, yeah. on, in number two, uh, the, the state legislation uh, press release was also in that complete communities. There were two press releases okay. by CPC. And so okay. Miller and, and Michaela are here about the, the uh, uh, state bill. All right. Well, well, thank you, Corla. Okay, so let's let's finish that up because I know that's what they wanted to talk about. So go, let's go ahead and do the press so, release. Again. That's their arena. I'll let them speak. I have some comments when they're done, but well, let's hear. Miller has a nice presentation. <laughs> I'll be quick too, and hopefully entertaining. Um, so I'll just do a quick overview of some of the bills, and then once I'm done, I'll send a link um, that'll have a brief summary of the bills, um, at least the Senate bills, and fact sheets, bill language, and a link to follow them in the process. Um, overall, these bills are meant to streamline the process for property owners to help increase affordable housing um, and respond to our housing shortage so our kids and grandkids can stay in San Diego. Um, but there's a lot here, and as I said, I'm not exactly an expert, but I 
will answer what I can and get answered what I can't. Um, the Senate, the, we have passed the House of Origin deadline, so all Senate bills are in the Assembly and vice versa. Um, the scheduling of our, our session has changed a lot because of COVID and we've lost a lot of time. And the, the goal, this legislative session was to have some really, uh, really look at affordable housing seriously and how we can increase it throughout the state. And that, um, as Corla mentioned, was one could say expedited, um, more because just we lost a good chunk of time because of COVID. Um, but as I said, feel free to ask questions or send comments. I'm happy to get anything answered. The, so I'll, I'll just go over very briefly each bill. I don't know how uh, well-versed everyone is at the bills out there, but I'll um, mention each briefly. So Senate Bill 899 allows affordable housing on land owned by religious institutions and independent nonprofit colleges. Senate Bill 902 allows local governments to pass a zoning ordinance for up to 10 units, it used to be six, without triggering CEQA and in areas that are transit rich, jobs rich, and urban fill. Um, SB 995 extends what was AB 900 um, for what are called environmental leadership development projects for housing. Um, it lowers the dollar threshold for the investment value from 100 million to 15 million and includes 15% affordable housing. Senate Bill 1085 enhances the density bonus law by increasing the number of incentives provided to developers in exchange for providing more affordable units. Um, Senate Bill 1120 by Senator Atkins adds to the ADU law, creating lot splits and additional ADUs, although there is language in the bill that says it cannot, buildings created by this bill could not be short-term vacation rentals. The minimum stay would be 30 days for tenants in those additions. And it would have to meet local zoning. The city council would still be in charge of approving or denying. And the last two I wanna mention, Senate Bill 1385 allows residential development on land zone for commercial office and retail by making housing an eligible use for those sites. And then Senate Bill 1410, um, which is a budget trailer bill connected to budget, um, this is an optional agreement between the state landlord and tenants to avoid eviction and foreclosures during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and this would be in the form of tax credits given in the amount of the missed rent from the state to the landlord and tenants would pay rent back to the state over 10 years, interest free starting 2024, and it could be forgiven or reduced based on their median income. So that's just a, a quick overview. I'll send more information. Um, the Senate and the Assembly will not be reconvening until July 27th. So you folks have some time to uh, talk and, and think about it as, as a group or, or however you want to do it. So just feel free to reach out to us with any comments. Um, and I'll touch on that with, in terms of the here. timeline. Um, so the, I, the assembly today did announce their committee meetings. And so I was able to see where these bills fall. Um, actually, a lot of the bills fall within the local government committee. Um, SB 1085 is the only one that will be going to the housing committee. Um, and the housing committee is where uh, assembly member Gloria does sit and can vote. Um, SB 1085 will be, uh, you know, on assembly member Gloria's, um, well, he'll have the time to make a position on July 28th. Um, other than that, in terms of the Senate bills going to the assembly, um, it could be any time before August 11th um, that assembly member Gloria would have to vote on those on those bills. So that's kind of the timeline. Um, August 31st is is the date that um, by law all legislation would need to be passed by the legislature and go to the governor. 
Okay, yeah, so um, if, you send, if, if you send information, obviously it's something that we may want to look at at the, the August meeting. Um, Corla, did you have a comment? I do, I, I have one, one uh, specific comment from Miller about uh, specifically about SB 902. I understand there's language to the effect that a simple majority vote by local governments, including city councils, could overturn voter initiatives. And this would certainly threaten our 30 foot height limit here. Uh, is that language in there? And do you think it will be uh, removed at some point or is that gonna stay? So I can double check on it and look into it specifically. I don't see any intent for the state to override a, a city vote, um, but let me, let me make sure. Yeah, but the, if the language does say that, that's certainly concerning for our neighborhood. And then I urge the board to read the two press releases. Brad included them in the um, uh, agenda, and I think they're on our website. Read the CPC press releases because they've broken all this down, and they have a, a lot of information in there from community planning perspective from the whole uh, committee. So uh, read those for background information. Uh, Jim, do you have a, a comment? Yeah, very briefly um, on the um, on the community planners uh, committee press release on on these state laws. Um, first off, it's it's it uh, you have to really really enjoy this stuff to dig into it and keep track of all these bills as they move forward and they're amended in committees and 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 get sent around and all of this kind of stuff. And it's it's it. Uh, you can find a, a lot of threats in there, and a lot of those threats are absolutely real. What I think CPC has very nicely done for us is, is that there's three bullet points at the bottom of their press release on the state zoning mandates. And basically, what their, what their concerns is, imposition of state mandates to take away local control of zoning and land use, change in land use rules to allow ministerial decisions to bypass local community review and exceptions to the California Environmental Quality Act, those three points that you just put in front of your, your camera. And, and, and I, I, guess, I guess what I would say is, is as a general frame of reference, th those are the kind of comments that either would or would not be made by the, San, by the city of San Diego on our behalf, it would seem to me. So, um, and, 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 those, and those comments come in reaction to laws that are coming down where I think state legislature over a period of time came to the point was, hey, we need for you guys to build more housing. We need for you guys to build more housing. We need for you guys to build more housing and housing elements and all those kinds of things. Get, and, then, and then the housing just didn't get built. So now they're telling us instead of asking us or trying, attempting to. So I guess my question, the, what that boils to have a question is at the local level is, um, do we as a city have a general policy in reacting to these bills in Sacramento through our council and through our legislative analysis divisions at the city that lines up with those three points or, or not? And, and to me, that would be a key point because we can bang our head uh, uh, reacting to the state or reacting to all these bills and everything. And the question is, philosophically, does the city of San Diego agree with those three points or not? And, and that, would, that would sort out a lot of the legislation and a lot of what our reaction to it should be. I don't know, is Josh still here? Does, does the city have a view on that? Um, the city does hire um, lobbyists to, to work with the state uh, in Sacramento. We also have, a, the mayor has a government affairs team. I, I don't specifically know if this is an item that's been addressed. Council itself doesn't necessarily get involved in that type of legislation, but yeah. you know, we certainly obviously advocate and, and make sure that that um, you know, could or, or shouldn't get, get included. I'm happy to ask. I suspect it's on somebody's radar, I, but I just don't know to what extent. Yeah, I just uh, I don't know philosophically if the city is saying, "Hey, get out of our kitchen, state," or if, in some respects, maybe the, maybe the city is welcoming it because they want those additional units and the ability to streamline and do that. And that's that would be a useful thing for planning groups to know. What are we? Is the city in line with what the state is attempting to do, or is the city not in line? And who knows? Maybe some of that come, gets resolved out during uh, the mayor's election. <laughs> Uh, David? 
Uh, Miller, could you, which of those various bills is the one you referred to that allows for commercial land to be used for residential purposes? Um, the commercial land one was Senate Bill yes. 1385. 1385, okay. And does that basically override local zoning so that if a piece of land is zoned commercial, it can be used for residential purposes, notwithstanding what the zoning is? Was that a yes? I'm so sorry. I would, have, I would have to check on that. Um, okay. Okay. Um, I, I'll, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll look at it myself. Um, and which one of the bills was the one you mentioned where uh, landlords who have tenants who have not paid rent can take the unpaid rent and apply it as a tax credit? It's 1410. Senate Bill 1410. Yeah. Okay. And are, are either of Tony Atkins or, Glo or Todd Gloria uh, uh, sponsors of those bills? Yes. The, the Senator already voted for 1410. And to be clear, it's an opt in bill. So sure. landlords that want it can right. use it. I get that. I that get don't, that. don't have to. And do you know if those tax credits can be carried forward from year to year if they're not fully used <laughs> per year? I believe they can be held on to and will have the option, right, of, of holding on to them, selling them, trading them. Oh, selling them. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, all right, great. Thanks. That's what I want to know. That's it. Any other comments? Miller, Michaela, thank you. That was very informative. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, guys. And I have a question, so I'll, I'll get back to Fred with some answers soon. Okay. All right. Well, I think we, we, we're covering some good territory. So, Margaret, we still have a – all we have is now is sports, uh, sports arena redevelopment. So, I'll propose content. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Oh. <laughs> Midway, I've been super invested in this project. Um, I've been sitting in on all the meetings. There's been special meetings. There's been one big one was last night, actually. We were able to, it was really awesome that Kathy, you know, gave us the heads up that there was going to be two presenters with the proposals, which I really enjoyed because if any of you have, and I, again, as I get information, I'm going to send to you guys feel free to join. I just really feel like you all as um, neighbors, community members should be involved and listen, not just PCB, being a PCB board member, um, should be involved in this because it is going to be a huge, huge project. Lots of pluses, lots of good stuff um, coming down the pipelines, but lots of concerns. So we were able to hear both sides. We were given the opportunity to hear both proposals live um, via Zoom. Um, the presenters gave their whole take, their vision, um, which basically I'll give you some updates. I took lots of notes for you guys, but I'll just, <laughs> I'll just give you the, the real meat and tater hardcore. I also want to say thank you to a few of you guys who did hop on with me last night. I think Mark, Corla, Mandy, there's a couple of you on. That just showed that the PCPB had a good presence in this meeting, so I really appreciate that. I was really proud of our team. Um, basically... The first presentation was David Malmuth. He spoke and presented um, that there's there's three collaborative parts to his project and presentation, which um, uh, is is really big deal. Um, the projects vision, which included challenge athletes of San Diego, sports innovations, and circulate San Diego. I found that quite interesting that they've collaborated with these groups to kind of bring the vision to fruition. Um, the city is uh, they have, are actually having, a, they're gonna have a couple of open houses. They mentioned it yesterday, but also I, I've been getting loads of emails now um, on some uh, upcoming um, visual Zoom meetings and also online meetings where they're gonna collect um, feedback from the community. That is amazing because as we all know, that never really happens. So I'm really glad that they're open the doors, you know, parties, um, both part back from the community. A couple concerns that I just want to share with you guys, um, the presentations, and then the community, um, board members went first for the Midway um, Planning Board, and 
The first presentation basically stated that it's going to be um, 1,500 residential um, units. There is going to be a sports venue. There is going to be a music venue, two separate deals. Um, they did clarify that the music venue, one of the concerns was noise for the residents and the neighborhood. Um, that was going to be an enclosed music venue. Serena is going to be their main priority for revision right off the bat since it's there and needs some beautifying. They've already um, been in talks with the San Diego Loyal that is owned and operated by um, MSL's um, famous Landon Donovan. He owns the team. He had a vision, if you all remember, he had a vision, actually a city petition and um, vote that was actually denied and didn't pass for soccer, um, soccer I forget city. What it was yeah, soccer city. Thank you. It was soccer city, but that kind of fell through the loop, but they're going to kind of try to revamp that and bring it back to incorporate with this first proposal and plan that was presented again by David. Um, he also went on to say that they are currently, keyword currently, respecting the 30 foot height limit with their proposal. However, both parties did state that they will submit something that's a little bit more aggressive should um, Dr. Campbell's proposed waiving of the 30 foot limit get waived. They have an alternate option to be able to build above the 30 limit. That was a huge concern to um, everyone kind of in that in that meeting. The project literally will cost about one billion dollars. The sports arena will get um, a new rendition to match the surrounding plan developments. The entire project will be about the experiences of Midway. Um, the key ideas that they pulled for this project for proposal one had to do with um, the master plan. They did look at the master plan, the current master plan um, in great detail, and they, they're planning their stuff into phases. So phase one is gonna be the soccer stadium, Phase two, the village, it's gonna be a mixed village use, which will have residential and some retail. Um, and then also they said that um, the focus is, the ultimate focus is um, going to be the soccer stadium, remodel, blah, blah, blah. And then some of the concerns from the board was the stormwater issues in that area. I guess and I, from previous Midway meetings, I've been attending them religiously now for two years. And Jim, you can back me up because you used to be the Midway liaison. Um, the storm issue is a main thing down there in Midway and mm -hmm. we didn't have an answer for that. They basically said that Dave and this first proposal said that the landscaping artist for the project is looking into those issues. So um, he'll have a better answer for that. Homeless was also um, a concern. They okay. said, kind of create a um, conservancy, conservancy team to manage the proposed um, parks that are going in. And they hope that the parks that are going into the sports arena area will be managed. Um, they haven't found out the logistics because this is still in development mode, but they would hope that anywhere in that, if a park's gonna be in that development, that it's gonna have some sort of management team 24-7 um, there. Um, they also, density was a main concern. Um, they, someone mentioned, what if that 30 foot limit gets tossed? Um, the response was, well, they're gonna make sure there's lots of parking, um, but at the end of the day, they see everyone using public transportation and cycling um, in, in that area. So they're basing their concepts and their developments um, into the future. Uh, make you know not needing that much parking space in the midway area so the people were kind of saying good luck with that <laughs> and was working with caltrans they did promise they didn't have a plan or an answer for traffic we all know of course because we commute in that area Just keep in mind, these people don't live in the area that traffic is a concern going into the peninsula and ocean beach so they did promise that they were going to work with caltrans to improve relationship with them also provide a better answer to be smarter uh, about moving people around uh, the point. So that's kind of going to be one of their brainchild goals is to kind of, you know, they want to implement, they want to be, I guess, the, they want to use this as an example that you really don't need to drive anymore and, and, and be able to build and have more retail and units into communities. Um, I mentioned water storm issues, music, 
the second um, the second uh, proposal was ASM Global. Zach Adam was the speaker. I got to tell you, it was very disappointing. He kind of just threw it together. He was very unorganized, didn't answer questions. Um, he basically, some important points for him. Oh, I have some numbers. The first presentation said affordable housing is going to be about 10%, mm -hmm. but 10% is going to be prevailing wage too. Um, and those are important numbers to know. And then again, the second, the second proposal was very vague. Um, he basically showed a couple samples of projects they have done in the past that are real high congested areas like Los Angeles, LA Live, he used that as an example, China, um, a, a couple other places that just was not focused to the community concerns and issues and also um, that area. So uh, the first proposal did do their homework and research, provided some good points, opened up, you know, uh, the feedback to the community to really get, you know, the comments back and the second proposal was vague. They are gonna have some workshops again, as I mentioned before. So um, I will provide that to you, Fred, to share with our group, because I would love to see PCPB really involved in this because it is gonna affect us and it does affect many in our community. So I have, um, as, Corla knows I have shared this on my multiple community pages that I manage and uh, Facebook. So Corla and Mandy, if you can also, and Mark as well, I think I covered the basics. I don't want to get into it too much, but the presentations were there. The community did share their input and it's going to happen regardless. It's just a matter of us being able to provide our concerns and our feedback on what we want to see midway. Okay, well, thank you, Margaret. And, and definitely send me that information so I can share with the board because it's, it's clear, it's a, it's a huge project and it definitely, there are neighbors, right? So, yeah. um, so it's definitely gonna impact us. So I think Corla first and then Mandy. Yeah, uh, all this, uh, you can review all these projects online. The, I think the uh, website, Margaret's posted it, but it, it, there, she'll, she'll have the website and Fred will have that. Um, the Midway Planning Board was interesting uh, meeting. Uh, they're telling us it's either 30 feet or parkland. Uh, the first presentation, MSED had uh, a webinar this morning. And so I know they're willing to do presentations and probably will have more. I agree with Margaret's uh, assessment of Brookfield. Uh, it, it was very poor, no specific numbers or anything like that. What I'm hearing from the community is everybody's against change, not everybody, but a lot of people are against changing the 30 foot height limit. I got an email right before we started uh, this meeting. But the only other comment I have, Margaret covered it pretty well, is on uh, Zach Adams' presentation, the Brookfield uh, very vague presentation. He spoke for 25 minutes and gave yeah. everybody about five minutes to speak. Yeah. The other presenter stopped at 15 and allowed comments, but Kathy Kenton, the chair of the Midway Planning Group, she's, she jumped in she, and, and she sat back pretty much as chair and, and let the meeting happen, but she jumped right in on this one and her comments were, no high rises here, and we do not want LA Live here. And that seemed to be what he was pushing was that LA Live. Now, I know a lot of people like that second proposal, but these are just the comments and feeling that I got from the meeting yesterday. And I don't have an opinion personally one way or another. That's just information that I heard yesterday I wanted to share. Yeah. Thank you, Cor Corla. Um, I agree. The first presentation, I felt like they were prepared. They were very informed. I felt like they had listened to some of the inputs that had been from the community. Um, the one concern that I did have with the soccer stadium and the parks was they had mentioned that it would be possibly like privately managed. And the issue that we have it with our parks here on the peninsula in the city is that the the park space is typically uh, rented out to private uh, sports clubs, and so it it, la it limits sometimes the ability for other community members to utilize those parks. So that was one concern that I had. And then um, with regard to the infrastructure mitigations that they promised that they would improve, I, I suggested that they put those in first. 
uh, as opposed to latter, just due to our already lack of infrastructure and it, it, it needs much needed improvement, I think it would be uh, set us up for some issues if they started the construction without making those investments into infrastructure first. The second um, present presenter, uh, again, in my opinion, I felt like he talked about, he was talking about Hong Kong, LA, Sydney, everything but San Diego. He had no, um, he, the plan he gave us was an aerial view. It did not show anything to the fascia, the exterior of these buildings. Um, he did say that the plan he showed us did provide, it was um, within the 30 foot rule, but part of his presentation was he was endorsing and asking us to endorse complete communities. And so he was a big adv advocate of that. His name was Zach. He's actually claims he's a Point Loma native. And I felt it was very interesting. He seemed to be disconnected with some of the issues that our community is experiencing. And the fact that he wants to densify at such an extreme rate it's going to exacerbate the already existing issues of traffic and um, lack of infrastructure here on the peninsula. So those are my thoughts. Um, again, uh, pros and cons, but again, the second one, um, I just felt like he was not prepared and he almost didn't want to hear comments or input from the community. That's my opinion. Thank you, Maddie. Jim and then Margaret. Um, I, I very, very much appreciate everybody who has been tracking these matters closely and everything on, um, and, and uh, appreciate the reports out from, from Margaret and Mandy. Um, what, I, what I would like to uh, kind of put out there for you to always keep in mind as you're reviewing these projects is that is to make sure that we can ascertain that it's consistent with the work that was done on the Midway Community Plan and the EIR that was associated with that approval. We spent a lot of time reviewing those. We spent a lot of time reviewing about uh, freeway ramps that could be used as additional mitigation. We spent a lot of time, um, uh, at one of the specific comments we made in the AR comment letter was, what is exactly the zoning that this plan applies to that property? And is that what was assumed in all the travel forecasts and Mandy also in all the infrastructure demands for uh, fire and all the other kinds of things and so forth. So the question, it seems to me, question one to be answered is, is this consistent with the assumptions and the land use that was called out in the Midway Community Plan adoption? because it's a fresh plan and they shouldn't be able to, uh, to exceed the limits uh, that were imposed by that. So that's just for all of us to kind of keep in back mind, there is a benchmark that we need to hold them to. Jim, thank you. That, that was very, I think that's very helpful for everybody. Very good. Margaret, you're up. Jim, because you have taught me, I have <laughs> for that. And proposal one did state that their division, that their design and vision was based off the community master plan. So yep. because you did teach me that, I was looking for that because I was going to ask. Um, proposal two, however, did not follow those guidelines. So I okay. agree that is very important that they took the time to, to go by those master plans. So proposal one did. Um, really quickly too, one thing that kind of irked me a little bit was that um, they said, you know, they're going to put their focus on the sports arena, which is fine. That's because it's there and they're going to work with that first. But they also said farmers markets could be there. And then Kobe swap meet could go, you know, and continue to, to, to do its thing until, until they get that okay to keep building. And yeah. I think the proposals to me at the end of the day are waiting on this 30 foot deal, which it to me a little I don't know like as I said they they're, they're just kind of they couldn't really give us much information based on this 30 foot deal passing. so yeah so I just want to put it out that out there the proposal one did address that farmer market and, and if, if Kobe swap me could still keep going until they they decide to to build further so it's not going to just if you hear anything out there it's not going to always stay there they're going to definitely build to the extreme in this area either which way. So yeah, 
I make that. Yeah, I got, all right, I got Corla, then Mandy, and then I think we're going to try to, to wrap this up and move on. So, but it's been a very productive discussion. It, it was my understanding that each of these groups were supposed to put together two proposals, one within the 30 foot height and one uh, it, it with disregarding uh, uh, that, depending on what happened in November. And I'm not sure uh, from what I've seen online that they've done that. Uh, M MS, uh, whatever the first one was, uh, was saying 80 to 85 feet high. And my only comment here is that Midway Planning Group is for this. And, and don't forget the post office is, uh, the half of the old post office is, is going to start demo soon as well. But the Midway Planning Group is in favor of all of these things going on in their group. I'm sure they have reservations and questions, but they seem to be in favor. Okay. Mandy? Yes, I did want to ask Josh, yesterday during the presentation, I didn't have an opportunity to ask this of this individual, but the second RFP group, Zach Adams of Brookfield, he identified himself as the VP. And while he was explaining the entertainment and the shopping district that he had proposed to be, um, in that development, he mentioned that Apple the, was really excited about this venture. And I wanted to know if you could expand about that interest. Is that them having interest in putting a store in that shopping complex or is that them bringing a substantial amount of jobs to the community or the city of San Diego? I would like you to clarify that statement that he made yesterday because I did not have the opportunity to question uh, him. Uh, I'm happy to ask your question, but I didn't say it, so I won't respond for him, but I'm happy to okay. see if I can get an answer for your question. I did hear that. I imagine what he meant was they're trying to uh, fill in a lot of the opportunities to fund their project, and I think mm -hmm. he was alluding to Apple perhaps being a participant, but I don't know for sure, uh, but, I, but I'm happy to ask. Yeah, I would like clarification on what participation that... That, yeah. that he was discussing. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Andy, his contact information is also on the presentation if you want to email him yourself. Yes, please email that to me. So, Thank you, Mark. Really, really quickly, my recollection of the Apple anecdote, that's when he was describing one of his other cities' developments. Perhaps it was the one from LA. He, yes. he oh. framed it around talking about, look, we want to engage with whatever community right. we're building with and take their input. But then he just kind of did a tangent into talking about how, oh, we were doing this development and then that attracted things like Apple. Yeah. He yeah, wasn't Matt's clear. correct. Matt's correct. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Matt. And Margaret, thank you. That was very, very informative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. All right, let's go to um, government reports. And so I don't, um, I'm going to start. Fred, really quickly, Brad looks really tired. I, know. <laughs> yeah. I, know. He, I think he wants to be chair again. <laughs> Tracy, I'm going to let you go first because you're our neighbor from Ocean Beach and when you have, we haven't got to talk to you yet and, and we love Ocean Beach. <laughs> well, thanks. We love you guys too. <laughs> Just real quick, uh, the last meeting, we uh, the, the board actually did weigh in on commu uh, complete communities. We sent the motion to uh, you know our electeds, and um, I believe Andrea also made quite a stir and many points at the CPC meeting. So um, I'm sure you guys know how we feel about complete communities. Um, also, at the last meeting, I wanted to let you guys know that the board voted to send suggestions to the city for designated motorcycle parking on Voltaire, uh, Santa Monica, and Newport. Um, there's quite a few people in OB that have motorcycles and we feel like having one motorcycle taking up one parking space where we could have one parking space that we could give to three motorcycles would actually be better for the community and our parking issues. So um, the board voted to go ahead and approve our, our plans for that. Um, also, I want to let you know that we have a ad hoc parks subcommittee that's coming up on the 21st. And the two parks that are on our agenda are um, the uh, Spray Street Dog Beach Park, that whole um, green area that's over there. And then we're also going to be looking at Rob Field Athletics, uh, Athletic Park. And 
we're going to just look and see if we can come up with uh, alternatives or better solutions for the space to be used or um, things that, you know, can make these two spaces more enjoyable for the community. And with the communities uh, plan, with them trying to focus on parks and community parks, we thought that this would be a really good time to start looking at those. So if you want to attend that, that is on the 21st. Um, and you can just send me an email and I'll, I'll, hit, I'll send you a link to, to register for the meeting. Um, we also have a, a transportation subcommittee meeting coming up on the 27th. And I don't have any firm ideas for the agenda yet, but there are a couple of things that are kind of floating around in my brain. Um, uh, one of them is discussing the need for a stop sign on Voltaire and Frude. Mm -hmm. um you know we're, we're thinking about that um i also want to kind of look at our our hit list that we've designated last year we had a, a list of um ideas that came from the community when we had the um the ob street fair booth so we accomplished some of those goals last year but we want to actually like reevaluate our list and kind of prioritize what we want to go for this year so um we're going to be going and doing that too so i'd just like to invite everybody to attend those yeah. Uh, Brad, Brad. You had a question? Yeah, I just to add um, regarding uh, Voltaire and Froud, uh, that is already approved for a flashing beacon and a crosswalk, mm -hmm. and the evaluation for the always stop is up at, at a Wanda, a little higher up the hill, to catch the people before they start picking up their speed. So I know that there had been some talk with tra the um with downtown about that but I, I just wanted to just let you know that there's already something that's in place for that location because of the bus stops okay um and also you know the the unfortunate situation with the skateboarder and all that so they're uh yeah a little you know block or two up to stop the cars rolling down that hill that start mm -hmm. to speed so just let you know they're looking at that, at and that what did, intersection. What did you say was already approved for Voltaire and Frude? Uh, uh, um. Voltaire, yeah. Uh, we had actually asked for that to be evaluated, uh, what was it, Margaret, in 2017? <laughs> um, and uh, finally made it to the top. And there's a flashing beacon and a continental crosswalk that's been approved but unfunded at that site. Uh, um, because there's a, a bus stop right there, it made it, uh, you know, it's kind of a danger. We had had it as kind of a dangerous intersection because of the blind coming from the north. It's a little blind coming there by the dentist's office. Yeah. You know, you can't really see around the corner there. So uh, just to let you know, there's something in place already. And so okay. I think the city pushed it up a couple blocks. And for that's the definitely, stop. was that definitely at Frude or was it? Definitely at Froud yeah. and Froud and yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Froud. <laughs> Somebody else might. Yeah. Okay. okay, so I'll go ahead and um, bring that up and just you know, I, I also pulled the accident report for Voltaire over the last three years, and I wanted to share that with the with the committee as well because you know it's it's one of those it's one of those places that we know it's dangerous, but the accident reports aren't really showing it, so it's kind of I don't well, know. I've talked to the city about those accident reports. Sorry, Margaret. Um, no, no. About those accident reports. And sorry, I just want to interject. Uh, they're, they have to actually report it. So yeah. whether or not something happens there, it, because they may not have the stats, because uh, people get hit all the time and there's the police. I mean, they've got three traffic officers in the whole city at one time. Yeah. Three. So they just don't make it to accidents. In that particular location, it was actually kind of enlightening because there were 31 reported cases of injury on, wow. at that location, but there was one, the one death, and the one death was the most recent one with the skateboarder. So well, good. I'm I mean, glad. I think that was a, a pretty large indication. That's a big number. Problem at that intersection. So thank yeah. you for telling me because that will help us make a decision if we want to push for what you guys already have like you know join on to the bandwagon and let's push right. for it. Yeah. Uh, okay cool get the stuff funded yeah How about margaret let's let's have margaret i was just gonna reiterate with brad i gotta tell you 
I joined um, the Traffic and Transportation Com Committee three years ago with Brad when he first took over. And we have done so much work and homework in Point Loma, which also includes some of OB. So I, I know Brad isn't the chair anymore, but he is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to traffic and transportation in our community. And he has already done all, all the, the researching and has talked to engineers and down in Sunset Cliffs. So I would highly recommend if nice Brad would just be open to it. Tracy, pick his brain because he's done a lot of the research and a lot of the tests and we have spent three years on on a lot of this stuff that could be on your list that can help you quite a bit. So yeah. I'd pick his brain if you get a chance. Well, I mean, in this case, I'm kind of responding to the community outcry for a stop sign or something because of the yeah. order that got hit. And um, you know, the thing about the community is that they're not as aware of things as the boards are. So it's good, you know, I'm glad that I announced some of my thoughts for the next transportation meeting because that was one of the things that I was going to discuss. And I definitely don't want to add to the request that's already pending. I'd like to help it, but if it's already, if there's already something that's happening, then we'll just just support it, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, we created a list that I can send to you that we've been working off, Brad, remember, for like oh yeah, three oh, years. We've been be chipping away at this list. Yeah. We have a lot this of letters that are on our website that you can refer to um, that the board has approved. And, um, you know, I followed up with the city, but whether or not those projects actually, it was sort of like, you know, what does it take to get funded? because we have multiple projects that are just sitting there dormant, which is kind of one of the reasons that I lost motivation to be on the committee because yeah. we weren't, we got all this stuff approved, but we've not seen any fruits of all of our efforts. Yeah. So, and, and I also want to say Margaret has done a great job. Uh, she's the one that compiled all the stuff in the beginning and got us rolling. So yeah, well, Margaret, we definitely appreciate all, your, all the work by you and Margaret on, on track. No, yeah, it's been great working with Brad because it's it's a lot of work and it's important. Our safety yeah. is important. So I appreciate you, Brad, doing all that. And I hope you you can kind of somewhat stay involved. How about, how about Robert, Robert, Robert Jackson? I'm still here, Margaret. Robert Thank Jackson. You for saying that. I appreciate you too. Oh, Robert. Tracy, just, just real quick. It seems like the Pointe Avenue and Sunset Cliffs four-way stop is working better than I thought. Has there been any feedback on that? You know, within um, the community. Yeah, as far as like the community chatter goes, some people got a little freaked out and they thought, oh, it's going to slow down Sunset Cliffs. And, you know, that's well, that, I assumed that's the point, right? It's to slow wow. down Sunset Cliffs. So um, for the most part, people were just, you know, complaining about change. So, <laughs> you know. well, what I was concerned, it would just it would, it created just a log jam, but it seems to be working OK. I yeah. just think the city has to work on West Point Loma and Voltaire on timing those two lights to work with each other better. Yeah, and you know the, the the thing is, is the traffic is so different in the summer than it is in the off season as well. So, I mean, there might be a log jam going on, but you know, right now we're not at peak summer, I don't think either. So, yeah. right. you know, yeah, I haven't heard much except for you know, oh my God, there's a stop sign. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Sure. All right, we're gonna go. Um, we're gonna move on. Thank you, Tracy and uh, Josh. Um, Go to district two. Is there anything else that you, you've just been the star of the whole meeting? So I, I don't know if you have anything to add. To There's a lot going on. It's all good. Um, I just want to um, briefly touch on um, the conversation about Midway. I want to thank Margaret and Corla for definitely attending the planning group meetings. It's always appreciative to have. It's easier for us as well to have everyone in the same room at the same time hearing the information. It's just it's it's awesome to to have that. I just want to give a little perspective on the timeline of uh, of what we can expect. Um, what we're going through right now is a is a conversation for a master uh, lease develop, developer. So we're not really necessarily on a project specific level right now where we're talking about whether we're going to have a stadium or we're not, or whether it's 65 feet or 75 feet. What the city is looking at right now is who they should begin lease negotiations with. And so um, I anticipate that we will have that initial answer probably by the end of July. And what that means is the city and that master uh, developer or that lease negotiation process begins. And then once they start that process, that's when they talk about a lot of these specific details. That will come back to council, committee, and then council 
and probably the Planning Commission as well, um, once they have reached an agreement. I don't anticipate that that happens until next year. So, um, uh, you know, by the time they get through all that negotiations, and who knows, that person might pull out, they might, I mean, who knows what we're going to end up with. Once that gets to an agreement, we will have the project specific details on the stadium. So, um, or, or whatever, ha whatever happens, right? Um, so I just wanted to let folks know, you know, the, the master lease developer will come back uh, and propose specific project level details that will require an additional EIR, public input, all of that. And that could be five to seven years out. I mean, who knows the timeline on that? So I just wanted to give a little perspective that the concepts are exciting, but I just want us to be also focused on the people which you all were really referring to, which, which was important. So thank you. Thank you, Josh. Thank sure. you, Josh. No problem. Probably, do you have a follow-up question on that? Well, just a real quick comment. The the comment period ends July 20th. Is that correct? I mean, that seems to place the urgency on it. I think that's where I, we're confused then. The, no. the the comment period is, is, is that's correct, but it is not the final comment period and is really on who you would like the city to work with on their specific concepts. So Social media is not taking it that way. I'm, I know you're on next door and it, it's, it's blown up with this whole thing. They're all freaking out. That's why I'm here. Happy to help. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Margaret, I'm happy to clarify that. I, I do want to, and I'm, I, I've let the city know that and I don't know the best way to get that out, but you know, I, I do think we should let folks know that there, this isn't again, a longer process. This is about decide. This is really the first interview. Who we want the city to work with in their lease negotiation. That that's the. This is the first round. Okay, Margaret, follow up. Hey, Josh. Thank you for that so much. Yeah, I brought that because in previous meetings, that is really important to communicate to the community. Yeah. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. I have a question for you though, because in previous yeah. meetings with Midway that I've attended, they've kind of been up in the air with proposals at any time more proposals can come through the hopper. Are these the only two that have been submitted? Because I did know last meeting with Midway, they stated that more can come. And then Kathy just invited these two to, to present at Midway. Yeah. Elaborate, so there were, elaborate on that? Yeah, so there are four proposals submitted to the city okay. for redevelopment. Awesome. Two of them were responsive. And those were the two that we see at the Midway Planning Group meeting. Those are the only two being considered okay. currently. Thank you. Yeah. So if you go through the RFP, the actual um, uh, doc, the actual PDF document, it outlines what the city deems responsive to uh, meet. And it's not just what you saw in that the, the pretty pictures of the buildings in the stadium. It's also financials and references, et cetera. Yeah. So um, it's very possible that these two also don't make it and we start the mm -hmm. process over, right? So, you know, I think it really truly just depends on what ends up happening with the lease negotiation um, and, and how that takes takes foot, so. Um, Thank you for that clarification because that's been a little vague. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. All right, well, Josh, thanks. I really appreciate you attending tonight. Oh, no today. problem. Sorry, I do have just one more item. I have exciting conversations about medians down Rosecrans if anyone wants to talk about that. Oh, <laughs> Ooh. Yes, yeah. Get excited, everyone. Um, real quick update. There's an old Route 209 fund that's from old state funding that the city had access to. Um, oh. I um, believe it or not, I want to thank Conrad, I want to thank Conrad Ware from, from the mayor's office and the council member for working together to find a solution. Um, the, the Point Loma Association's also been involved a little bit. Um, starting Monday, actually, we'll see construction on 10. Uh, curbed uh, medians from Canyon to North Harbor. Um, I believe they're starting on Canyon, is what I understand, and working their way to North Harbor. Um, they will change them from the um, asphalt concrete and move them to a more like rock blanket, so they'll be more flat. So they will. It's basically a curbed beautification project. Um, so you will see some traffic. Con um, configurations change from while they're working on each of these medians. Uh, so they will block one lane on each side of the median while they're working. Um, and as they move to, I'm pretty sure they're moving to north to North Harbor from Canyon. Um, I believe that they're starting on Monday. Don't quote me on that. That's what I'm told, but that's when I think they're going to start and that it should be completed by September. So I believe it's a quick turnaround. 
So there right. isn't any medians right. on Canon. Are you going to be inserting medians? Um, I believe it's not. It, it's from Canyon. I think there's one right in front of Harbor Town, isn't there? In the, That's in the Rosecrans. Yeah, I'm sorry. On Rosecrans from okay. Canyon to North Harbor. I, I, I see. Okay, okay. My apologies. All right, Brad, do you have a question? No, yeah, I was going to ask Josh, um, are they going to be making them any wider? I mean, we in traffic, uh, that was a, that's a terrifying corridor. Mm -hmm. And we had tried to get uh, a flashy beacon and a crosswalk there, but they didn't have enough pedestrian traffic to meet the criteria because everyone's too scared to walk across that. So I'm just wondering, <laughs> is it, is it is it going to be, are they going to be wider so people can actually feel like they're going to, they're, they're, because other, you feel like you're going to get picked off when you're out on one of those little things. I don't think that they're going to be wider based on the traffic regulations for that specific uh, right. street, but I also don't think that they want people to necessarily stop on them. <laughs> uh, but, um, Good luck. Yeah, no, I know this is going to be, yeah, but it's going to be beautiful. So that'll be nice there. Um, I think it's also going to help with the weeds that are growing through there too, which will be helpful. Um, what section, Brad, are you talking about that you wanted a flashing beacon on? Are you talking about? Well, what we were trying to do at one point was we were trying to get a pedestrian corridor uh, from Roseville to the Bay. Uh, yes, please. Do, excuse me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was, uh, Roseville to the Bay, and one of them, it was going to be, we did get one approved at Emerson and Scott Street, a flashy beacon and a continental crosswalk, but we were also trying to get Emerson at Rosecrans, because that was halfway between the light at Harbor Drive and halfway between the light at Shelter Island, yeah. but that one didn't get approved yet. Um, so, again, oh, just trying to have a connection for the community to the water. Yeah. And also that intersection also goes right there to Fisherman's Landing and Point Loma Seafood and all that. It, it was just trying to, to make the neighborhood a little bit more pedestrian. Yeah. Um, so yeah, okay. that's, it was in that area. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Corla? Josh, can you uh, put out some kind of a thing on next door to let, like a little press releasing to let the neighborhood know about that? I, I can't take yeah. enough notes to do that. And then I'm just gonna toot my horn for a second. Uh, that during this pandemic, a few years ago, I spent a year and a half getting those touch sensor uh, crosswalk buttons put in. And everybody, I can't tell you how many people have thanked me for doing that with this pandemic. <laughs> Nobody wants to touch anything. So just a little. All right, good job, Corla. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna move on because we're getting, it's getting late. Michaela, do you have anything else that you would like to add to the meeting? I was telling Miller I needed to shorten my report a little bit. I wanted to <laughs> introduce myself again. I know that I've only been able to attend a couple meetings. Um, and so, um, you know, since March, our office has been focusing on constituent services. Both Miller and I are the points of contact in terms of EDD in our office. So we've been helping thousands of constituents with their um, unemployment claims. Um, also since March, I wanted to give Mandy a shout out. Uh, with her assistance and her advocacy, uh, we were able to convince San Diego Unified School District to put a food distribution site in the peninsula and in the coastal communities, um, which is located at Dewey Elementary. Um, so, you know, tell your neighbors Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, if they have students or kids between, um, you know, toddlers to 18 years old, they can, they can pick up food over the summer. Um, I did want to mention, um, in case the board doesn't know, I think I mentioned this during February's meeting, but Assemblymember Gloria is authoring legislation, AB 2731, to help facilitate the transfer of land between the Navy and Sandag for the NAVWAR site. Um, my colleague Randy did send Brad some updated information today. I can forward that to Fred, who can forward it on to the board. Um, any feedback, you're more than welcome to email me individually. Um, also wanted to touch on uh, today, the state auditor released um, her 2019-2020 audit. And one piece of it was um, Assemblymember Gloria's request on the air pollution control board. 
um, they did find that the quality of air in San Diego needs to be changed from moderate to severe. Um, and this is, you know, this audit was conducted prior to this weekend's uh, Navy ship fire. So there'll be a push to kind of change uh, who is on the Air Pollution Control Board. Right now it is the County Board of Supervisors. Um, they've been, you know, failing to um, include environmental health uh, members. And so I um, wanted to touch on that. And then lastly, in terms of DMV, um, for those who are the age of 70 and older, um, and their license is set to expire between March and December of this year, they will receive a one-year extension. So there's no need to rush to the DMV to renew their license. That's cool. Um, so yeah, you know, tell your neighbors again, they may not know, um, the media hasn't really been highlighting it as much. Uh, if anybody has any questions, you know, feel free to contact me. Um, that's it. Thank Can you, you post your email again? Yes, I will post it on the group chat. Okay, perfect. Thank you. How about Miller? Miller, you got anything else for us? I do, but I'm going to be really quick. Okay, good. Um, first off, I just want to say it's really great to see everyone from my start off as a you know, community rep for this area. These, you know, this was one of my first two meetings I was representing. So it's just cool to see everyone after the hiatus. Um, I'm now technically a point woman because I'm just east of Froud, but I'm also <laughs> an Abitian. So I like to say I dabble in both communities. Um, okay, here's my quick report. The governor signed the budget. Um, it protects school funding and health and human services funding, and it maintains the $300 million increase to homelessness funding, and it responds to our $54 billion deficit due to COVID. We had a large surplus at the beginning of the year before this all happened. Um, in terms of the protests, the pro tem has been very supportive of the protests, of course not the violence, um, believes in de-escalation, demilitarization, more outreach and community policing. Um, finally, as Michaela was saying, we've been helping lots and lots of people with unemployment insurance. We're here to help reach out to either of our offices. Um, and there's lots of COVID-19 resources on our website. That's it. Thanks, guys. Perfect. Thank you, Miller. Good to see you back, too. Thanks. Hey, uh, Robert, did you want to make any uh, announcements related to the Point Loma Association? I just what I understand, obviously, they won't be a fundraising dinner, so they're working on doing some media interactive uh, event to raise funds for the association. And I guess we'll probably hear more about that shortly down the road. Okay. Is there anybody else that needs to make an announcement that I've missed? Good, good. All right, we will go to non-agenda public comment. I don't, Nicola, do we have any of that? Can I, can I, can I, can I just jump in and um, make an announcement during this time? Sure, sure, that'd be good. Okay, well, my name is Ms. Wright. I'm the Community Planning Liaison Officer for Naval Base Point Roma. I do have a couple quick items I'd like to share with the community. Um, if you were at the Midway Pacific Highway Community Planning Group meeting, I uh, apologize because this will be a repeat information. Um, the first item I wanted to share was that there will be a change of command at Naval Base Point Loma. Our current um, commanding officer for installation, Captain Brian Dixon, he will be released by Captain Kenneth uh, Franklin. Um, Captain Dixon has reached the end of his assignment, so uh, there is a change of plan on 24th. Uh, due to COVID-19, this will be live streamed on Facebook. So if you haven't attended a Navy change of command, this is a really great opportunity. It's pretty neat, actually. Uh, and the second thing I wanted to uh, share with the community was that, um, as some of you may know, Navy is in the process of developing an environmental impact statement in support of Old Town Campus revitalization efforts to provide new facilities for NAPWA. Um, I did present to this group back in November and provided uh, the initial details on this effort. Um, I just wanted to say that the next step in this process was a draft EIS, which was going to be initially available at the end of summer. 
However, due to COVID-19 and uh, maybe wanting to do a more thorough job, we need some additional time. So now the draft EIS will be available at the end of 2020. Uh, as we get closer, I will be able to provide an exact date. And uh, during which time the community will have an opportunity to take a look at this project and all the environmental impacts and provide comments uh, back to the Navy. And then lastly, um, I am the uh, planning liaison between the base and the community. I will leave my contact information in the chat. If there's anything Naval Base Point Loma related, any concerns um, that the community wants to reach out, we are available uh, and we're here to listen. Um, so um, we definitely encourage that. That's it. Thank well, you. Thank for your you, Ms. Scott. I appreciate that. And we like having the Navy be a good neighbor. Thank you. So Corla, do we have any public comment? Well, that was, um, I was going to announce that command change because I heard that yesterday, but thank you, Michaela, or Musk, I mean, for um, commenting and, and being part of our meeting. Uh, my comment was how many wonderful representatives Midway Group had, uh, and, you know, we've got them, too. We've got Josh and Miller and Michaela and Musk, and, and, you know, it's very nice to have all you here. Thank you so much. Um, my public comment is that the, the city, I understand we're in the middle of a pandemic, but you know, I drove, I, I don't get out much these days, but I was on the freeway last week and it looks like a third world country, the trash and everything else and the dog poo and the mask and the stuff in the neighborhood. And I don't know what can be done about it, but I'm just completely uh, disappointed in that. And um, I'd like to thank Mandy and Margaret and, and Tracy and everybody that's been to all these meetings and Brad for being such a wonderful uh, interim chair. He's done a lot of work. It is a lot of work and uh, there's a lot of stuff going on and we all just need to keep up, you know, and it's, it's tough. So um, I, I would like to thank everybody for their participation and everything that's gone on. And thank, thank you, Fred, you. for stepping up to chair. Thank you to uh, Corla. She's, Corla's done a great job, as you can see, and she's been indispensable and in, for <laughs> me asking questions for months. Good job, Corla. So um, do we have any other commissioner comments before we, uh, I just have one more thing, which is sort of setting the meeting schedule. Oh. Which, I, which I'll just say, I, since I'm gonna say it, but I, I think we've missed so much, right? That we, we need to meet regularly. You know, and so I, I'm a, my plan is to have meetings every month. And I, I think that, you know, I mean, this meeting is symbolic. I, it's been enjoyable for me to see us all talk about real issues that affect the community. And so my plan would be, unless there's objections, is, is to just have a meeting every month and until we get to December, and then we'll, we'll figure out whether we want a Christmas break or not. We're not That's going fun. dark in August. We all have vacations. <laughs> Vacation with us on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Carnival Cruise Line is open. Uh, I, I that. <laughs> That's cool. I don't go out of the house. <laughs> well, right, I have one more thing. There's Josh. There's uh, you announced yesterday a meeting July 21st or something, and I I didn't get it, and I don't remember. I think it's a height limit. Could you please uh, enlighten us on that, please? Next yes, Wednesday. absolutely. That's the City Council uh, will take on the ballot measure. Okay for the amendment to the coastal height limit overlay zone in the midway plan on the 21st. Okay. That, that, that's the last, um, need to be at what I expect to be the last step in the process to get it to the November ballot. Thank you, Corla. Well, thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right, anything else? And um, as the interim chair, again, I'm, I'm just here to facilitate help everybody. So if people have issues and questions, let me let me know. I'm here to help and I'm, I'm help you all. So thank you. Thank you. Again, I really enjoy having a substance conversation on everything. So thank you, guys. And Good job. Uh, Good job. Thank, thank you. Job. We have a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Do we need that? No? All right, I'll make a motion to adjourn. We're done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Great job. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thanks, Brian. Good to see you. Tell Kathy hi. Wow. Hi. Corla.
Okay. Bye. <laughs> That's just me and you. <laughs> I Brian Silva, I used to work with his wife for many years, so wow. I'm surprised to see him because they're actually in the Midway group. Well, that went great. What do you think? It was long, but man, it was good, huh? Yeah, it was good. Uh, I mean, there were some pretty tense moments.